The world of Iraq has been destroyed once before. When the celestial comet known as Palor's Light was shattered, its remnants fell to the world below and caused utter devastation. 46 years later, and the world has begun to recover, but a terrible threat is on the horizon. Hey, I'm Cam Buckland, a human cleric. Taken in and raised by a traveling band of performers known as the Bucklands, a colorful group of misfits helped shape me into the devious, charismatic, and foolhardy man you know today. My troubled past led to the clerical devotion of Evandra, the goddess of change and luck. I'm slowly discovering that I hold power that is beyond the knowledge of most folk, something to do with the lightfall. My name is Zhu Tou Zi Zi Jing. I seek revenge on the dragonborn who murdered my parents and enslaved me as a child. After escaping the cruel whip of my captor, I trained as a monk and fought to free my fellow tieflings. But now, I search for the dragonborn in gold and red. The dragonborn called Korak. I am Alora Galanadel, a noble druid of the Spire of Galad Helen. When the lightfall struck, most elven spires retreated and have remained lost in the Feywild. I have made it my duty as part of the royal line to reconnect with those friends that we have lost. I'm just not entirely sure how I'll manage it. Growing up running around a forest hasn't exactly prepared me for the rest of the world, but I can't let my family down. The Spire of the Moon needs me. I am Trelamar Alif, a drow warlock. Circumstances in my past have resulted in the disownment of my drow heritage. Now I serve a greater power, one who is leading me towards an item that will unlock the full potential of my magical abilities and help me destroy the Delkir. Four heroes, brought together by chance, begin their first adventure to escape the clutches of a corrupted Fey spirit. Defeating the Fey spirit, they realize as they all head in the same direction that sticking together is better than being alone. Their destination? The capital of the Dawn Republic, the mighty city of Talis Var. On their journey, our heroes encounter a town plagued by an unseen evil. Once again forced to work together, they uncover the creature responsible. But tragedy soon follows as Juto falls in battle. This once divided group unite for a new cause. To save a friend. The heroes rush to the nearby Longwood, where an Archfey agrees to return Juto to life. But in exchange, they must stop a nearby spirit that has corrupted a tribe of orcs. They agree, and with the help of the Elven Spire of Autumn, thanks to Alora's nobility, they successfully defeat the Hunter Spirit. Returning to the Arch Fey, and each of them offering a great personal sacrifice, Juto is restored to life. The heroes reunited once again. They can finally resume their path towards Talisval. As they make their way to the capital, however, they uncover a group that seek to overthrow the Dawn Republic and face off against a pair of their agents in the village of Phaeton. With one of their villains captured, our heroes learn the name of their foe, the Broken Sky. Concerned and seeking to learn more, the heroes arrive in Talisval. They immediately get to work, discovering a hidden cell of the Broken Sky within the great city. Things take an unpredictable twist as Trelemar and Juto attempt to join the Broken Sky, even subduing Elora to prove their loyalty. Elora manages to shapeshift and flees her confines to seek help. Using this uneasy allegiance, the group are thrown into a trial to prove their worth and eventually succeed. As a reward, the heroes are given the opportunity to meet the leader of the Broken Sky through a magical mirror a woman referred to as Princess Felania. Just as Cam forces her to reveal her true nature, Korak, the dragonborn champion of Talis Val, alongside Alora and all their allies, arrive to the rescue. Korak faces off against Varesh, one of the Broken Sky lieutenants. At the same time, the group attempt to rescue their friends and escape. Despite Juto's initial hostility towards Korak, the heroes prove themselves very resourceful to the champion. Varesh barely manages to flee, leaving many questions left unanswered. Returning to the surface, the heroes hope to enjoy a moment of frivolity as they perform for the Mason's Guild, one of the reasons Cam needed to get to the city. 
The performance, while marred by jealous rivals, won the crowd, particularly with Cam's glowing hair rebirth and a peculiar granny with her evocative singing and dancing. While basking in applause, chaos erupts as the theatre is attacked. A hidden assassin leaps from the crowd to strike the champion Korak, who is left in a comatose state from a poisoned blade. With the champion paralysed, the party are tasked to find the cure deep beneath Talisval, in the ruins of the city that once was. And that is our tale so far. Our heroes now set off on new adventures, but the threat of the broken sky still looms over the Dawn Republic. Are we actually live? <laughs> I, can, I thought you were tricking me. I thought I'm actually you were telling tricking you. me. Uh, Do you blame me th for thinking you were tricking me? No, exactly. Hello, everybody, and welcome to High Rollers, the <laughs> weekly clusterfuck of a DD &D show here on the Yogscast Twitch. I am your dungeon master, Mark Sherlock Humes, and joining me this week we have Katie. Hello. We have Matt. Hello. We have Kim. Yo. And we have Chris Trot, who is struggling to open up <laughs> a beef jerky strip. For me. For Kim. <laughs> so there we go. Thank you very much for joining us. I hope you've had a <laughs> lovely week of gaming and glory. Uh, <sighs> you right there? Uh, Having a good laugh? That was stressful. That was very stressful. It's been, it's been a tough day. I think we've all had a very tough, long weekend. So Sunday. I think it's going to be a bit mad tiredness seeping through oh. um, as we all go a bit crazy. <coughs> To, we're going to jump straight in. Uh, only brief announcement is that next week we are hoping to have a poster, a high roll <laughs> poster, will be available online. We don't have a preview just yet, but I'm sure we'll post up one next There's week. There's a sneaky, tiny little There's peek a tiny on our Twitter. Yeah. Tiny little sneak peek. At High Rollers D&D, you'll yep. see a Who could it be? Tiny Who could it be? But yeah, so uh, there's a little sneak peek, but hopefully we'll have a full thing to show you guys like a watermark version next week. Nina's just been a bit poorly, so she wasn't able to finish it mm. before this weekend. Um, but it looks it's fucking awesome. Looks I don't know if you guys have seen the latest version, yeah, yeah. but it looks fucking... I'm super happy with it. I was standing it. behind her while she was drawing on Friday, just like looking at her. Right. Like, oh. I was like, you put, am I picking off? She was like, oh. <laughs> no, it's no. fine. I was like, I'm it's just going to stay. So there you go. So that's the only real uh, sort of announcement, I guess. Um, to jump straight into the recap. So last time, and I have to stretch my memory back, 
I believe we concluded the events that were happening in the town of Melody, a kind of old ruined town that had been taken over where a number of Nalistri's uh, hired guards and some several civilians had been taken um, by the Burning King's men, basically this bandit lord who is taking over the uh, northern area of the Dawn <laughs> Republic um, and he had taken a bunch of civilians there and you guys had gone in to try and rescue them. Plans did not quite go as expected and Trelamar was left in a bit of a pinch uh, and was uh, fighting a manticore and a hobgoblin rider on the back uh. of a griffin. Uh, in a daring move, he jumped onto the back of the manticore, managed to deal several, quite a lot of damage to the rider itself, but was unfortunately knocked unconscious and, uh, and was taken hostage temporarily. The rest of the party ran to his aid after making sure that the civilians were all safe, um, and you managed <coughs> to eventually defeat the hobgoblin uh, rider and save Chalamar, who split the manticore into from the rectum, uh, which Beautiful. is his yeah. style, obviously. Um, so with that in hand, you revived, and Elistri was healed, and Elistri being the son of Salandris Frostwalker, Duke of the Spire of Winter, which you are headed towards, with, along with Elora's parents, and uh, Queen Shalana and Commander Paler of the Autumn Spire, all heading in a lovely little band together. Along the way, you were, mis you were waylaid by an elemental storm of magical nature that seemed to come out of nowhere exceedingly quickly. Um, after a few deductions by Trelamar, it was spotted that there was a fortress amongst the clouds and that somebody on the fortress was generating the storm itself. Um, it passed you, you managed to survive, although taking a little bit of damage. You survived the storm, only for it to start heading towards Talis Var, the capital city itself. You rushed to the northern lands, into the troubled lands, they're called, uh, an area, a cold area of snow and ice north of the Grasping Peak Mountains. You made your way there and eventually found your way to the Winter Spire. But I am going to do a small narrative recap to kind of help you visualize where you are. So, uh, just because I had time to actually write this one, so Excellent. it's a bit better written. Excellent. <clears throat> So the troubled lands are not like anything you've seen before. White snow covers the ground for as far as your eyes can see, dotted only by the occasional green hill or copes of pine trees. Tall grey mountains serve as a backdrop. The air is cold and bitter, cutting through your clothing as though it weren't there. Your breath steams in front of you as you make your way slowly through the snow. You crest a small hill past a small pine wood, and then you see it. Walls of thick snow engraved with beautiful elven scripture and a tower made of jagged ice rising from behind them, reaching up into the pale blue sky. Elves in blue and silvery armour patrol the walls and as you approach, they part ways and the orn ornate metal gate opens up in part of the wall itself. You watch as the gate opens, seemingly unconcerned that it is connected to what appears to be nothing more than impacted snow. Inside the walls of the spire's settlement, you see unusual round buildings of wood and stone that you don't recognise. The wood is pale and has an almost bluish hue, and the stone seems to sparkle in the daylight itself. The tower is made of jagged ice rising up like an enormous icicle. Balconies of silver railings and shining windows poke out at varying intervals, and you can see the very tip of the tower has a circular platform around it, where several figures patrol, looking out on the surrounding landscape. Inside, a beautiful foyer of ice and sparkling stone greet you. Unlike outside, there is no bitter chill or steaming breath. It feels comfortable and pleasant, and the smell of roasting meat wafts through it. Glinting decorations of silver and glass rest on shelves and cabinets throughout the tower, as well as the occasional portrait or tapestry that covers the frosty walls. You made your guys wade inside, and you actually uh, used uh, an, an ancient elven device to send a message to Falk and to <coughs> Enoran in Talis Val, in the hope that one of them will be able to get message to Korak and alert them of the coming storm. And that is pretty much where we left things last time. So, you guys are currently in the room, in this sending room, which is kind of like a large circular table with all these different rings that can be rotated with different symbols, um, and then a crystal in the center which sends the message itself. Um, now, Listri looks up at you and he's like, I've sent the message. Um, uh, there is a, a lounge area I can take you while you meet with uh, Laura's parents and uh, wait things if you prefer. Does it have grapes? There will be food, I'm sure it can be provided. Grapes. Warm and bread. bread. Yes. Warm bread. Very well, yes. Uh, there'll, be, there'll be hot food. Noodles. I don't know what those are. Spicy. There is there is some spiced wine. Does that... I cannot drink. Ah. Uh, yes, you are. I suppose you are quite young. Um, 
Perhaps um, <laughs> some hot food may, may have a similar effect to warm your belly, Miss. Uh, you, I, I find the tiefling very strange. <laughs> I, I really, I don't enjoy talking to her. But, um, She's weird. <laughs> I'm going to go store my things and check on things, but um, if you wait, I'll, I'll lead you to the lounge and then leave you to wait there. And I, no doubt I will see you for dinner this evening, if that's well. Um, thank you once again for everything you did on the way here. Uh, please, if you don't mention the incident at Melody with my father, I would, I would be greatly appreciative. Thank you, Cam. And with that, he kind of backs out. Uh, his owl, his little owl familiar, Whisper, uh, just perched on his shoulder. And as he walks out, the owl's head rotates around. Woo! Uh, as it looks around <laughs> at all of you. Every uh, time. And he just leaves, basically. Um, there are a number of attendants that will lead you to a kind of like a large lounging space. It's an open room, um, long chairs, stools filled with rugs and cushions. There is a table which uh, has steaming hot bread, um, various Boom. sauces, spiced wines, water, and um, various fruits as well. What kind of fruits are we talking? Uh, there are no grapes. What the shit? There are <laughs> snow pears. <laughs> Uh, there are snow pears, uh, there snow are fairy pear? apples. Uh, it's like a pear, but white. What's a fairy apple? Uh, it's like an apple, but it's slightly sparkling. Okay, I want one of those. Yeah, delicious. It tastes very sweet. Um, <coughs> extremely sweet and refreshing as you bite into it. Uh, your parents, uh, uh, Althadon and Aletha, are currently there. Uh, they're just resting. Althadon appears to almost be napping. He has his eyes closed. Uh, you can see his chest rising and falling in rhythm, uh, whereas your mother is just reading through uh, pages of a book. Um, uh, Queen Shalana and Peter are basically looking out of a window out onto the landscape, uh, just kind of standing next to each other uh, and looking out of this window as you enter. Holding hands? Mm. Space for Cam in the middle? They, no, they are holding hands. Damn. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to cradle... A load of bread like a baby. And just you just pick up a whole loaf. There is like a knife for you to cut it. No, nope, whole loaf. You just whole loaf, hold it like Cradle a baby. Like a baby mm -hmm. And wander around and start looking at the walls. Okay. Because uh, it looks like snow, right? Yeah, the walls themselves, they, at first glance, they just appear white. But as you get closer, it does seem to have the texture of snow. I'm going to start kicking it and scuffing it. And see so as you kick it, it feels like you're kicking stone. It's so hard, it's like kicking stone masonry. I'm just going to be lazily chewing on bread as I'm like, is there getting a bread out knife? the dagger, seeing if I can cut it. Yeah, there's a bread knife, yeah. <coughs> I pick up the bread knife and I just stand behind Cam, waiting for him to turn around. Okay. I'm very, you know, taken. Distracted. <coughs> it's all made of ice. Um, as you guys are, as, yeah, as you're kind of, it's like, yeah, it all appears to be made of ice. As you say that, though, uh, Althadon, <coughs> I wasn't sleeping. <coughs> Where are we? Yes. <laughs> Ah, Moonbeam! And then he looks over at you and his like, eyes light up. He's just like, ah, huh. it's very secure here, very comfortable. I'm surprised. Salandris is not normally one to be such an inviting host, but it is welcome, I suppose, after that journey. I don't get it. Don't get what? Like, the walls are made of ice, but uh, it's not cold. And if uh, Elora's mother nods, she's just like, yes, it is. Uh, the spires themselves are made of the very nature of the elves that belong to them. Uh, in this case, the Winter Spire is connected to the Archfey of Winter and the Realm of Winter in the, in the Feywild. While he's talking, I'm just trying to, like, with the knife, just trying like to... In his hands, like, yeah, you're, like, trying to lean to... in and cut the bread. Just as you get close, I'm just, like, turning around. <laughs> like, <laughs> completely oblivious. Oh, no, oblivious, so okay. Oblivious. So, like, every time you do that... So um, hungry. Bread? Queen? King? <laughs> so Althadon's like, mmm! Oh, so yes, that's good. And he goes up, but he goes up to the table and like picks up rolls. I'm like tearing off a big chunk for him. <laughs> he just walks past. He just walks past. I eat it. Um, at this point, Shalana and Pela turn around and they kind of greet the rest of you. They bow formally. Um, Pela looks at you and she's like, "Did you manage to send word to the city about the storm?" We sent word to someone in the city. We sent word to Enaran Swiftwind. He works in the city. We don't entirely know if he's going to be able to get to Korak with this. Mm. We also sent word to Falk. Ah, an interesting idea, if nothing else. We did hear that he was in Talisval recently. Mm. The, when when we sent the message, though, there was sort of a green... A green bird. Shalana kind of nods her head and she's like, yes, that would uh, make sense. The last time we saw Falk, <coughs> he and the other orcs, the ones that you assisted, their connection to the Feywild has grown significantly stronger. Many of them display magic that elves have only previously possessed. Uh, many of them have become druids under tuition, under the, the gatekeeper's tuition. So it does make sense that there may be some sort of connection of magic there that is unexpected. Do you think that that will make the message 
more likely to get to Falk? Falk is half elven. <coughs> Perhaps previously it would not have helped or not, not have worked uh, sending the message. But with this additional connection to the Feywild, I suspect it may have done. Hmm. You could say that the bird is the word. I keep eating my what bread. What word? <laughs> <laughs> the message. Oh yes, I suppose it, it's many words there. Yeah, but the bird is the word. I don't she looks know. At you. I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm glad that you keep good good company, Alora. <laughs> <laughs> it's pleasing pleasing to know. Um, and yeah, you guys are just standing around talking for a little while. You know, is there anything yeah. you wish to talk about no. while you're doing this? You're just eating loaf? bread. Is there any loaf left? Barely any left. It's just and like then I just turned a Jew too. Bread knife in hand. Are you trying to stab me? I want the bread. Oh! I tear off a small chunk <laughs> <laughs> of the remaining bit. There you go. Uh, just put the bread knife in your hand. Thanks. Walk off. <laughs> you just <laughs> drop it on the floor. <laughs> yeah. There's like a, cl- a little, very loud clatter as it hits the ground. Uh, just like. Ding, ding, ding. Ice it's floor, good. too. Did uh, Althadon speak to Salandris when he arrived? We brew. We sp- did you asking you? I'm, a, I'm asking you because I, I can't remember what he went off while we went to do the message. Yes, he did. You don't. You, you didn't see. Basically, like you pretty much rushed straight up to this messaging room, and that was the last okay. thing you remember. Well then, I shall ask him. Okay. He's spoken to. Uh, no. Well, sort of. He was busy. Uh, let's. Well, I mean, at least we mentioned to us that Salandris has lost his eldest son. I've spoken with a few attendants. I don't know the exact details, but. Salandris is still very much in grief, and I believe he has gone to have say something at a grave or prayer or memorial or some such. I didn't want to disturb him, he is an old friend. Uh, so I merely nodded in greeting, he said that he would speak with us later for dinner, and that was the last time, that was the last I heard from him. Mm. Letha looks at uh, your mother looks around, she's like, is everyone all right? <coughs> it was quite a harrowing journey, and I know that you did quite a lot for us. Is there anything, are you well recovered? Is, is everyone all right? I'm doing fine. Are you okay? Yeah. What's your You guys okay? Yeah. Right. There's one thing that keeps me awake at night. It's this, just this imagery of Trell splitting apart a manticore's rectum. <laughs> As you say rectum, Althadon bursts out laughing. <laughs> 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 you humans have such a way with words. I love it. What rectum? Cass. <laughs> That's not as funny. No. <laughs> um, All right. He just looks at you. Rectum, excellent word. Human word, marvelous. What's what's elven for rectum? Uh, we would say the word uh, talath amala. That's way too complicated. Yes, that's why I like rectum. <laughs> that's way better. <laughs> um, your mother is just despairing at this point and yeah, is just I holding her hand in her head. Uh, and distracts herself <laughs> by going to get fetch some fruits. I don't know how it doesn't keep you awake at night, Troll. What's that? The, the rectum. Of the, the rectum. Why did you aim for there, of all places? Its back was towards me. It's like a target, like a bullseye. <laughs> Fair point. I'm guessing Fair you're point. also very annoyed at it after what just gone down. That is true. We should make a game. Pin the Eldritch Blast on the Manticore. <laughs> I think you're going to say, pin the Eldritch Blast on the rectum then. Well, that works too. <laughs> Slightly more catchy. Yeah. So as you guys are talking, uh, as this, this, this particular conversation is happening, uh, a figure appears at the doorway, kind of leading into this room. Um, she's an elf with long black hair, bright blue eyes. Um, she's wearing a pair of tight-fitting sort of leather leggings with thick boots, and a long tunic engraved with silver details and trimmed in fur. She looks quite young. She looks uh, about an Elystri's age. So, uh, in human years, kind of talking about mid-twenties kind of uh, age. Um, She has very sharp features, and you can see a slender, silvery rapier hangs in a scabbard at her side. Uh, She bows quite deeply. Um, Good afternoon, my lords and ladies. I am Silval Frostwalker, daughter of Salandris and Malasendel. My father apologises for not being able to greet you properly this morning. Uh, He wishes to have a formal dinner with you this evening as honoured guests. I'm here to escort you to your guest chambers and show you around Frost, uh, the Frost Spy. I step forward, very quickly. Oh, she kind of bows. Brushing off my breadcrumbs. She extends her hand. I'm bowing too much to see the hand. Okay, she retracts her hand. She's like, Camulus Buckland at your service. A pleasure to meet you, Camulus Buckland. Yes, I have fought hard in the past few days, so retiring to the guest chambers would be 
preferable. I see. Well, I have heard from some of our guards, uh, from they've heard from Nundi Street's bodyguards, that uh, you had quite the adventure along your way. I'm told that you in particular are quite a skilled... Yep, killed a manticore myself. <clears throat> and... Uh, I, I just shoot daggers. Oh, you're going to shoot an Eldritch <laughs> Blast just for a second? <laughs> With obviously assistance from my friends. Of course, of course. Well, uh, and I should, I, uh, as I said, I am Silval Frostwalker and the daughter of Celeste. Silval, a, lady a beautiful lady. name. I'm going to go and to fit stand a beautiful in front lady. of Cam. As you, as you do that, as you <laughs> to just fit stand in front of a beautiful lady. She kind of nods her head. Uh, she keeps like a smile, but it's not like she's grinning like I am, because I'm grinning because it's fucking troll. Um, she's smiling, but it's kind of just like a very serene smile. Um, as you kind of step in front of her, she bows her head very gracious, and she's just like, oh, my lady Alora, it is so wonderful to see you. I'm very sad that our families were never able to meet. I hope that we can be great friends in time as two daughters of Elven Spires. And she extends a hand in greeting. I take her hand, I bow back to her. Um, her she's was... nobler, Laura. What? She's noble. I'm not speaking. <laughs> there is a slight smirk, like a tiny <laughs> little crack of a smirk. I'm going to say, I'm very sorry for your loss. She, her features kind of go a bit sullen and she's just Cot like, blocked. Thank you so much. It is, uh, it is a, if it is a difficult time for the Frostwalker family, but we shall persevere as we always have. But your words are very kind, thank you. Um, and she turns to, at this point, she would probably look over to Tromar. Well, unexpected, but welcome to our household, uh, sir. Uh, as mentioned, I'm Silval. Pleasure. What is your name? She offers her hand. I'm Trella Leaf. Shake it. As you, as, as you take her hand, she definitely gives it a good squeeze. Like, there's an, almost a test of, of, like, not quite strength, but seeing how you treat her, like, how firm your grip is. How, how, is it quite a firm handshake, or are you quite gentle? Gentle. Or, gentle. Nice. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> she takes it. Um, <laughs> nice person. And she, she, like, bows her head. Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Elif, I uh, thank you for your assistance in bringing the others here, especially for looking after Lady Alora and her family. Oh, it was a pleasure. I'm sure. Good company. Striking, and what a strange creature you carry with you, as she gestures towards Granamir. It'll fly over and give her a little boop. She like, ah, boop. Oh. She, like, <laughs> she like strokes it, like gives it a little scratch. Yeah. Very Granamir nice. flies over, but he kind of sniffs a bit, and then he flies back to you, and you kind of get a flash in your mind of like, mm, not sure, don't mm. like her, stranger, stranger, don't like it. <laughs> so, um, and, stranger danger. And she kind of like bows her head, uh, and you must be. Interesting, a tiefling, I believe. I've never met one of your kind before. She offers her hand. I just nod my head. She bows her head back. Thank you as well for accompanying Lady Alora and her family here, along with Queen Shalana and her uh, aid. I'm just saying nothing. Strong uh, and silent, is, I see. This is Juto. Miss Juto, is it? Well, Can I hope you enjoy your stay. Can an insight check? Just don't want to see how it. genuine she is. Yeah. Well, I'm inside check. I'm gonna stroke Granamir while we're she's kind of she is very formal, but you get the sense that she is she carries herself in a very noble way. Um, and she is basically treating you as a formal she's being a formal guest. She's she's trying to play host. Noble, eh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm still gonna be silent. Okay. So she just goes like, Well, it is a pleasure and you are a welcome guest here. Um, would you care to follow me as I shall take you around the spire? Would you like a snow pair? Sorry? I've got a snow pair for you. <laughs> <laughs> I am quite all right. I've already eaten, but thank you. I put it. <laughs> Just drop it on your hand. <laughs> um, she kind of like looks at you, turns away. A servant comes in, picks up the pair, takes it over the table, puts it on the table, um, and then she leads you away. Um, she takes you through from this lounge area and back out into the entry hall where basically you first arrived. You can see that there is a grand staircase that leads and spirals up, uh, up into the high ceiling of the tower. Um, you can see that there are several guards wearing the silvery ice-like armour uh, positioned all around the room. There are various corridors and doors that seem to lead off, but she doesn't take you towards any of them. Um, she takes you towards a very particular, uh, she starts to lead you up the stairs, and you see that set into an alcove, kind of at the, the what do they call it? Not the top of the stairs, but like a platform. So the like landing. A, a landing, that's the one I was looking for. At the landing, there is like an alcove set in, um, and hanging in the alcove is a portrait of a 
very handsome young elf, uh, male elf in guard's armor, looking very kind of regal. He has a slight grin on his face. Um, he looks a lot like Lord Salandris, but a much younger version. And placed beneath the portrait is a wreath of white and red flowers, and you can see there are just dozens of flowers left all over this. Um, and you get the sense that as Sylvar leads you up, there is a kind of a moment of she stops <coughs> there and then carries on the way. I'm going to druidcraft a bunch of white roses and put them Okay, so you lay the rest those down the there. You kind of get the notice that a few of the guards, like, you kind of catch them in your peripheral. They kind of, like, nod their head, like, respecting that you've done something about that. Um, it seems to go down quite well with the guards. Um, but she leads you up the uh, stairs and uh, towards... Uh, she introduces... This is the Grand Galley, and she leads you into a gallery, sorry. Uh, this, and she leads you into a large open space full of, again, lots of chairs, but this time the walls are covered in things like bookcases, paintings, like on beautiful frames. Uh, there is a globe set into the center in like a wooden thing, various desks as well all around the place. Um, the, the paintings that you see mostly seem to either be portraits or group pictures, but there's also beautiful landscapes, kind of very ethereal, magical looking. Um, she gestures around. This is the Grand Gallery. You are more than welcome to spend any of our time here. We have a collection of books and, uh, as you can see, artworks that you're more than welcome to come and admire as you wish. Our, fa our family in particular is quite fond of uh, painting and works of art, especially. Uh, we've commissioned several pieces throughout the years. Uh, you likely saw the portrait of my brother Dathomir on the way up here. So. And uh, she carries on. She kind of, like, types I a bet, I bet I can point at your favourite painting on the wall. I would be very surprised, but please, enlighten me. Uh, I look around. Is there anything that's like a... Give me a perception check. Okay. <coughs> I've got a knack for this. Twelve? Okay, twelve. You look around, most of the paintings that you quickly catch as you're looking around, there is definitely, um, there's several portraits which seem to show various elves, always looking very regal, dressed in armour or robes, males and females, you kind of get the sense that they're probably ancestors of the Frostwalker family. Um, there's a couple of group photos that look like perhaps previous families or when people were younger. Uh, and then there are these beautiful landscapes. And you notice immediately, and you're kind of a bit travelled, um, most of them are not of the material plane. They mostly seem to be actually paintings of the Feywild. They depict these beautiful winter wonderlands that are beyond what you could ever achieve in normal nature. Uh, beautiful icy hills with ice sculptures, uh, trees that blossom even in winter um, with beautiful delicate colours, uh, kind of northern lights, kind of a style like lighting in the air. And there's many of these all around the place. And you kind of get the hint that maybe one of these might be. Yeah, the, the night sky mm -hmm. with the, the aurora, aurora, aurora borealis. Yeah. Aurora. <laughs> <laughs> this one, that's, that's it, for sure. She looks at it and she's like, it is an excellent painting, but I'm afraid not my favorite. Yeah, I knew that. That's why the one to the left of it well, you point to the one left of it, and it's of an old elf man who's kind of like <laughs> sat in a chair, like. Now Ugh. this, this really speaks to me. It shows the the beauty of age. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to spend any more time in the Glen Gallery, or I can take you on further? I think can I have a go? Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, try and oh. cut in. <laughs> give me a give me a perception check with advantage. Oh, okay. Oh, Fifteen. With advantage, you can roll twice and take the highest. No, I'd rolled before. Oh, I see. Was going. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that was not as good, I assume. Yeah. With a 15, you look around. And you see very much the same things as Cam, but something catches your eye. It's not what you suspect to be a favourite painting. It's something that is off in the room. There is a painting in the corner of the room. Uh, it probably would have once been a grand portrait, but the frame has not seen any use. It seems quite dusty and a pedestal with a vase on top of it has been moved to purposefully block some of the painting itself. Mm. What's this woman's name? I've forgotten already. Uh, Silval. <laughs> Silval. 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 Silval Frostwalker. Silval. The painting over there, it seems in disrepair compared to some of the other great pieces of art in this gallery. Are you gallery. claiming that one is my favourite? Uh, you look around, and there is <laughs> you, the, the one that you kind of get the most sense. Uh, give me a quick insight check. Can I do a perception to see if I notice that painting? 13. Yeah, sure. 
13. You look around, there is a painting which speaks to you. It's, it's a woman in yeah. armour. It looks like she was once a noble, an elf, female elf in a noble armour. She's wearing the kind of guard's armour with a silvery kind of ice sculpture. She looks very regal, and you're kind of looking at um, Silval. You can see she's wearing her sword, even though she's inside. She definitely has an athletic build. You maybe get the sense that maybe she appreciates, you know, a, a female warrior, a role model perhaps. Um, and you kind of point to that one, and she kind of like looks at you, and she's like, oh, that is one of my ancestors, my great-grandmother. She was a fine warrior. Well spotted. I can see you are very, uh, very much inspired by a great woman. My, f my brothers and I, well, my brother and I, we like to... We followed, in our, <laughs> we followed in our father's footsteps. We appreciate the martial ways of the elven people. I'm bored of the gallery, let's go. <laughs> As for that painting in the corner, don't pay any mind. It's just an old family photo. And then she goes to move away. Uh, what did you get, by, by the way? Like... So, you know, ten. Ten. No, you don't spot it, unfortunately. Damn it! I did you want to roll? Know, I can see you holding a dice. Did you want to do anything? Doing? I don't know. Like that's. I'm asking you. Do you want to do something? Because you were holding a dice. An old family portrait. Insight on but I would have face when she was looking at the portrait. Okay. The the, the dodgy photo. Okay. Painting. Dodge. Dodgy. Nineteen, photo. twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. There's definitely. She she wants to move on very quickly. The way that she was super dismissive about it. There's obviously something about that painting that she doesn't like. We'll have a look. Um, are they leaving the room? She's about to. She's kind of like leading the group. She's like, the next <coughs> place, uh, I'll take you through to the Duke's Hall. That's our next stop. It's, it's just off of the main entryway. Is there anyone else with us? Uh, you can see there are a few attendants following behind, but they're more there to just make sure, like, Cam doesn't fucking break anything or drop food anywhere again. Um, there doesn't appear to be any, like, guards or anything following you. When she leaves the room, can mm -hmm. I just loiter behind yeah, of course, and yeah. move the plant? Give me just see. a quick stealth check. Nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. Oh, very good. Um, you just hang back. You almost seem to. You kind of pretend that you're interested in a painting. Um, Sylvain kind of looks at you, thinks that you're following, and then turns and starts leading everybody else, which gives you enough time to just loiter behind and go check it out. Did you want to have a look at the painting? I itself? just want to like move the plant and see what was behind. Yeah. Like. So when you look at it, uh, what you see <coughs> is. Um, the painting uh, shows a family of elves. Um, there's about there's six or seven of them, but as you move the pedestal, you can see that there was a, a female elf that the pedestal was completely obscuring in this painting. Um, looking at the looking at the family of elves, you just need to give me a insight check to see if you can kind of uh, match up some memories. Seventeen. Okay, seventeen. Although you only briefly saw Lord Salandris and his wife. You looking in this picture, you're pretty certain that two of the younger elves, they look maybe in their late teens, they probably are a younger version of Lord Salandris and his wife, uh, Malisandel. Um, the rest of the family, it looks like it could be their parents and maybe a, a family, but the girl that was being obst obstructed, she looks to possibly be like a younger sister of Lord Salandris. Um, whereas the rest of the elves are kind of wearing prim and proper clothing, they have polite smiles as they're being painted. You can see this young woman is grinning, quite obviously kind of like really boldly smiling. Uh, her clothing has a bit more vibrancy to it. She has greens um, and hues of like lilac and purple mixed in there as well. Cool. And that's what you pick up on. Um, you are led through, the rest of you, Juto eventually kind of sinks back up and follows up with you after the lo loitering. Um, she leads you through, out from the Grand Gallery, into what can all intents and purposes be described as a throne room. Uh, a large hallway with uh, benches, with cushions, like wooden benches with cushions facing <coughs> towards two beautiful glass thrones shaped to look like ice uh, that face inwards towards the, the rest of the benches. Um, the long hallway has beautiful white walls, very similar to the ones that you've seen before, with tapestries emblazoned with the Frostwalker emblem, a snowflake with half of its tips designed to look like swords. Um, and you can see behind the, the two chairs is a large portrait of Silandris Frostwalker and Malice Endel, uh, the Lord and Lady of the, of the Spire, basically. Silandris is a, a regal looking, uh, older looking elf. His hair is pulled back into a ponytail and you can see the occasional stripe of grey running through it. He's clean shaven, uh, he has piercing blue eyes, very kind of angular and pointed, sharp features, very much like Silval, his daughters. Um, he wears robes of blue and white and he is very proudly kind of straight backed looking directly at whoever was painting him. His wife very affectionately holds on to him from, you know, kind of like 
behind. Um, and you can see that she's uh, an aged beauty as well. Very much like Elitha, uh, Elora's mother, she is aged exceptionally well. She has white and silver hair. Um, kind of mixed in together, pulled into a long braid around her throat um, and you can see she wears an elegant silver kind of necklace around her neckline um, and again a dress of blues and dark purples um, as she clutches next to him. Um, and yeah, you can see that this area appears to be some, some patch where they hold court or some such. So I was like, this is what we call the Duke's Hall. This is where my father and mother will hold court with the spire, uh, entertain guests, and also deal with the daily problems. Um, it is generally off limits to most folks. However, as you are honoured guests, you are welcome to pass through here if you need to. Uh, but we do ask that you bring a servant with you just in case uh, you need to move anything or some such. What sort of entertainment do they have here? Snowball fights? Things like that? <laughs> Perhaps for the children, yes, but no. Uh, we enjoy music, we enjoy crafts, fine craftsmanship. Um, stories, mainly. Snowmen. The children, yes. We have been known to make snow elves. Snowmen would be a bit strange for us, but uh, it's not too unlikely. We, we, we enjoy creation as winter spire elves. Uh, living in the heart of winter, we don't often see life, so we attempt to create a little culture for ourselves. Have you ever used an icicle as a dagger? <laughs> I once killed a, a winter wolf with one, yes. Like when I was a younger girl, we were fighting in an ice cave. Snapped off, plunged it straight into its neck. Amazing. Doesn't leave a trace either, just melts away. That's a very uncomfortable thing for you to know. Huh? Hmm? Well. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, shall we move on? Uh, you might find this next location more suited to yourself, Mr. Buckland, was it? That's right. Uh, through here, and she leads you out of the Duke's Hall, back into the Grand Calais, back out into another corridor, and then leads you through several rooms um, and says, ah, this is the kitchen and dining area. This is where we will take evening meals. Um, the dining room is a large double doors that opens into it with a beautiful glass table that's shaped to look like a, a piece of ice with frozen legs kind of curling around it, but it's all glass. Um, the chairs themselves also appear to be made of glass with thick cushions and furs thrown over them. Um, and there is a chandelier which hovers in the air above the table itself with crystals that dimly glow. Uh, you can see that the table is being uh, currently set by a number of servants, each laying out plates and, and cutlery and that sort of thing. Um, she then leads you through into another room and there is a kitchen, a large but well-maintained, well-cleaned kitchen, several different surfaces with a stone sort of oven sitting at the back. However, what does make you start a little bit is currently cooking several foods, stirring various pots. Uh, he, his top half appears to be that of a man, but with kind of like sloped ears, stag horns, and a kind of flat looking face. And then as he moves around the counter, you can see he has a pair of goat legs um, as he steps around. Two or four? Two. Uh, Whoa, hello, Lady Silval. Oh, how can I help? Ah, oh, you have some lovely guests here, he looks at you. Um, and she goes, ah, that? everyone, this is Polto. He is a satyr from the Feywild. He is our cook. I, I, I lean into Cam. <laughs> I lean into Cam and just say, don't have the goat's cheese. <laughs> as, as you say that, he's like, oh, 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 we have a funny one, we do. Do not worry, no cheese made by myself here. I would assure you, Lord Silandros would never allow it. <laughs> well, welcome, it. welcome. <laughs> you, are you hungry? Do you care for food? How tall is he? Uh, he's quite tall. He kind of, he's probably about your height. You're oh, short, okay. but for a Satan, he's quite tall. <coughs> but he's probably about your height, so he kind of has about eye level with you. So about four, eight, four, nine or something. Because you're quite short, aren't you? Yeah, so yeah, he's about four eight, four nine, and you can see him kind of working around. Um, he does wear like an apron which is stained with various like bits of food. Um, but he he's kind of like stoning. yeah, he's got hooves, and they clatter on the ground as he moves around. Is it really loud? Yeah. I just go up to one of the other staff members. It's like, how do you deal with that clopping all the time? You get used to it. Does it not like reverberate throughout the whole tower? <clears throat> no. Everything's made of glass here. It's magic. It's so annoying. It's just like. I'm sorry, sir. It, it is magical. It won't disturb you while you're visiting. Right? Have you any magical grapes? <laughs> As Polto hears you, he's just like, "You want grapes? Grapes? I've got. They're not magical, but I've got some lovely grapes in." Please don't tell me they're the other side of the kitchen. It's like they're over there. <laughs> Points. I'll get them. <laughs> you like you run over. You see a big bowl of kind of like grapes heaped up. Uh. It's like, oh, normally we serve them for breakfast, but if you want them now, by go ahead. Breakfast grapes. Yes. Why restrict it to that portion of the day? You really love grapes. <laughs> I love grapes. 
a lot. Take some. Take some. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm stuff is my mind. Uh, they taste incredibly sweet. Like it's almost like eating sugar, like a candied sugar. Oh wow! And it's starting to give you a bit of a buzz as well. Oh, like, like, oh mm. no! It's starting to feel pretty energetic. Yeah. Well, if you ever require food, you are always welcome in my kitchen. I am here to humbly serve Lord Salandris and the Frostwalker family. Great. Um, I have like grape juice all over my just mouth. All over it. Noodles. Mm. Grapes. Noodles. Uh, describe that. I've not heard of this food. Describe it to me. Noodles. <laughs> I'm afraid. I don't know what that is, I'm afraid. It's I will have glorious many treats for you this evening. It's like a thin pasta served with a spicy broth. I can do a spicy broth. Uh, what is a pasta? What is this? I do not like this. <laughs> <laughs> I will make sure that the, the demon child has spicy broth. Oh, don't. Don't she, mention the D word. Doesn't like. Uh, he like thinks for a second. He's like, no, broth has a B. Ah, oh, the, the demon one. <laughs> <laughs> She's called a tiefling. She calls me human all the time. Very well. She would very much like some spicy broth. I will ensure that it's done. If you require anything, please. My kitchen is always open. You are welcome here. Thanks. Polto. 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 Yes. Fine, say your name. <laughs> all right, here you go. <laughs> um, as you're led out, uh, Silval looks at the rest of you and she's like, Polto is uh, obviously not from the Frostbire itself. He was rescued by my father many, many years ago in the Feywild. He was captured by centaurs who were using him as a slave. Uh, as a reward, he treated the, my father's unit to a meal. They were so impressed that they took him back to their army and had him cook as an army chef. And after that, my father employed him to work here. Hmm. Mm. Now, finally, I shall take you through to your guest quarters. Uh, follow me. She leads you down back into the entryway that you saw um, and takes you through several corridors um, and turns to the rest of you. Now, Lady Alora, you and your friend Lord Althadon, Lady Aletha, you have your own room, of course. Each of you has a room. Lady Shalana, Commander Paler, you are, of course, have your own rooms as well. The rest of you, I'm afraid we were not expecting you and we do not have rooms to give you individually. We do have rooms that are normally used for aids of visiting nobles, but the three of you will need to share, I'm afraid. As in, we have separate beds, right? Of course, yes. Can you not just ice out a room? Just expand out some ice. I'm afraid that the spy does not work that way. But it's magic, right? Arthur just is like rubbing her head and she's just like, you should really teach him when not to speak. It's just so difficult to I know, try. I know, I know, dear. I can hear this. Oh, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Alphonse is laughing. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's like, I'm, I'm very sorry. Unfortunately, we just were not expecting you. The beds aren't made of ice, are they? No. They are made from the woods that you see, and she gestures to several of the cabinets and things that you can see around you. It's, it's made awesome. from like a pale, bluish white, uh, white, bluish wood. Um, and you can, she opens the door and you look inside and the woods themselves are covered in thick pillows, um, very thick sort of like straw, kind of a, a goose feather kind of like mattresses and things like that. Is it quite luxurious? Furs. It's very luxurious, inc incredibly luxurious. Um, it is exceedingly luxurious. Uh, everything is, like is beautifully crafted and, and done and it, it is very much built for comfort, comfort as well, like these thick furs just give you that little bit of cushioning so you're not constantly working on like walking on hard ice snow. Nice. Where so. do your servants sleep? They have their own quarters, if you wish. Uh, I can show them to you, if you would like. If you ever require anything, you may ask them, and they will come and give you whatever assistance they can. Do they have the same level of comfort? We ensure that our servants are treated very well here, yes. But they, they have grown, they have worked in this, their fathers and their mothers have been aides here, and they have served our family faithfully and, and welcomely for many years. But we are made sure that they are looked after. In return, our guards patrol the area, ensure that they are not under threat from any forces, and so on. So, let me show you. If there is anything else that you require, I am, of course, uh, eager to help. And as she says the word eager, she definitely looks at Trelamar and Cam. And Cam. Oh, okay. She looks at both of you. She kind of is like, a very eager. And then she kind of like does that sort of look uh, to offer you whatever assistance I can. As mentioned, my father would like to have you join us for dinner. That will be this evening in about four hours' time. Until then, you are free to use the facilities as you wish. Is your brother, is Nalistri around? Nalistri, yes. He was, um, he was settling back into his room. I believe he had some things to unpack. I can have someone sent to fetch him if you would like. No, that's okay, no worries. Just wondered. No, I believe he is quite tired from his uh, excursion. 
Yes. Are you doing that to her? I'm, no. I'm guessing that was an in-character thing, or was that not an in-character thing? Where, yeah, I've got like, a Because that feels like a Cam Buckland thing to do, like wave a dagger. I've got a bread something. knife. Okay. Actually, no, it is a dagger. <laughs> yeah. But the handle end. Yeah. Uh, where will we find you? Well, myself. Yeah. Uh, of course, I will be staying in, our, in my room. Where's that? Oh, I can show you if you're very curious. Obviously, you wish to have access I'd to... I'd like the full tour. Of course. Obviously. Yes. Uh, would anyone else care to join? Charles busy. He can't... Oh, no, no, I can find time No, but you want to speak uh, to the goat, don't no, no, you? No, no, please. No, no, you're no. both, of course, welcome. I'm just going to push my way... You can explain to the others. I'm going to push my way into the room and kind of, like, really obviously just knock these two out of the way yeah. while they're trying just to like, flatter <laughs> her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine yeah. my just dagger, like, just falls to the floor. <laughs> I cling, 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 cling. Oh, it looks like you've dropped something. It's fine. Um, it's Nimbus, so I go... Oh. She raises her eyebrows. Seems quite impressed. So I will, I'll show you, and then you can obviously explain to the others where I'm I am. I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm not sticking <laughs> to you. I'm not sticking around for this. She shows you. She actually takes you <coughs> up through the stairs, uh, back up the stairs. But this time she takes a different path and takes you to uh, the room where the Elven Gate Stone is, the actual stone that they use to access the higher levels of the tower. Um, she says you will need to ask a servant to activate this for you, but they'll do that if you tell them that you're coming to see me. And she kind of like gestures to them. They activate it, and a portal appears. She leads you through it. Um, I hate these things. <laughs> you kind of it kind of disorientates you for a moment. But you find yourself in a large room with three doors, um, uh, four doors. Sorry, uh, one of the doors seems to be a much smaller room. Um, she gestures. Uh, Nalistri's room is that one. This is my mother and father's room. Obviously, there will be guards stationed there at all times. I do not advise that you try and enter there. That room belonged to my other brother, so I ask that you do not enter that either. Uh, but my room, and she gestures the door onto the left, there is a guard stood outside. Is this one? Uh, she goes like, it's all right, Fainter, you can leave. And he's just like, are you sure, Mum? And he's like, yes, it's fine. And she kind of like heads off. He's like, very well. And he heads off, uh, going down a, a stairwell. So her room's on the left? Yeah. Right next to the King and Queen's? Uh, no, there is the, the, bro the older brother's, the deceased brother's room is in between them. Good. So... Um, and she, the she just she opens <laughs> she opens the door and she's just like hey. she's like well just so you know what it looks like uh, if you do need to reach me this is this is my room and you can see that inside there is um you can see that most of the furniture it's not very decorative there's things like a weapons rack which seems to have different swords uh, all laid on it you can see that there is a suit of chainmail on, on an armor stand um, and then there is a double bed uh, filled with large pillows and furs all thrown over it there's also a bear like a bear rug like with a head and everything on the floor. She's like, this is my room if you, if you wish to find me. I'm going to turn to her and look right in the eyes. Let's get right on to the chase. Yes. You want to hunt, don't you? You want to just get down and dirty, grab a weapon, get out there, and hunt. I enjoy a good hunt now and then, yes. Yeah, we should do that someday. Very well. I'd be interested to see how you hunt. Good. I'd be interested to see how you hunt as well, Mr. Elite. He's terrible. He's really bad. Oh. <laughs> it really sucks. It's awful. He's got the little dragon. It doesn't do it for him. She casts her eye and she's just like, I don't know. I've seen many men in my time. I've never met a dark elf before, but if he's anything like uh, my kin, I'm sure he'll prove it's quite bad. Oh. Well, I'll let you know that I do have a few tricks up my sleeve oh, when it comes to things I, like that. I don't doubt it. Yeah, he's like a pantomime act. He's got loads of like flowers and stuff up there. It's Kind of I did not go with them upstairs, by the <laughs> way. No, no, no. This is, at the moment, this is an Just incredibly say. awkward conversation <laughs> between the most awkward thing in the this world. Silver, the girl, and then the two of you. Um, she just kind of looks up and like, well, perhaps I should put you to the test at some point. Perhaps you can both come hunting and we can oh, see who is the best. Still so Good idea. Nervous. I'd like that. I'm sure you would. There'd be no competition, but sure. Okay. She's like, well, I think you should head back to your friends now. You'll need some rest before we go on such an adventure. True, true, true. <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> is Alora with Well, me? do you guys head back? Like, or are you just going to awkwardly try and stand <laughs> I know I say true, just walking backwards. Okay. It's true. Okay. Right. What do you do? I'm just going to give a, a bow. A, a bow. And then turn around? Yeah. Okay. I try and trip up Trell on the way up. Okay, well, as you go to do that, as you go to trip him up, you definitely feel that there's a bit of a pinch on the old bum. Oh! And you see this because you're walking backwards. Like, she kind of looks at you like you missed out. Um, as you, that happens, so you head back. Meanwhile, <laughs> eventually... <laughs> Am I with Alora? Yeah, at the moment, you guys are currently all sitting together. <coughs> your parents basically say, like, we're going to go get some rest. <laughs> we'll leave you and your friends. <laughs> and then they just head off. Um, Paler, Paler turns to Sean. She's like, uh, let's have a walk outside. There's something I want to discuss with you, actually, Shalana. And she's like, oh, very well. And they head off. Um, 
they head off in a mysterious manner. And then it's just the two of you, and then eventually these two make their way back. But obviously if you want to have a conversation for these dickheads, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> 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 You're right over there, Key. <laughs> Mr. Laura. Mm -hmm. I know you are happy to be here as this was your path and you're with your parents, but caution. Something is not quite right here. I don't know. This what family it are is. hiding something. I feel very cold. I know the surroundings. <laughs> uh, but. There's something about that we know already from the way they treat Nelly Street. The portrait in the gallery, it was hiding a young girl. I suspect she was a sister of Salandris. The Lord. Salandris is the main lord. Of the Lord. Yeah. He's the main lord of the Frostborn. Would I know what their family was like from Ooh, give me a history check. It would be quite difficult because <coughs> you've never spent a lot of time with this family. You could always go and ask your dad or something like that. Or your mum. Eleven. Eleven. Um, you try and rack your brains. The only thing you really remember about the Frostwalkers, uh, the, the fam, you remember that you've not really spent any time with them. They've always been quite distant. Uh, because, and the, your father would always uh, give them an excuse of, they, they work very hard to defend the Feywild, like they are actively the force that prevents the Archfey spirits from taking over the Feywild. So they're often very distant and quite emotionless. They're very logical and they're very tactical. Um, you vaguely remember something about, there was an upset. You were very young at the time, probably a little girl. You remember your father having to go to an emergency meeting or some such because there had been something that happened to the nobility. Something to do with the Frostwalkers, but you're not sure what. We'll relay that to detail. Just be on your guard. They are not like your family. I can ask my parents some more about it. Caution. Do you want to do that now? Or you wait? Yeah, I might go and ask them. Okay. They, they, have they left yet? They no, they're, in, they're in a room like next door, effectively. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so you can just go in there and you knock on the door and they're like, yes, come in. And you know, first, oh, hello. What's the matter with me? <laughs> he gets more <laughs> blah, 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 every time I play the Alphadon. Um, <laughs> what is the matter, my dear? Um, Juto saw a painting in the gallery that um, it had a plant obscuring it, and hmm. there was a, an image of a, a young lady behind it that she thinks looks very like Salandris, maybe a sibling. Your father's eyes kind of go, ah, well, oh, this is going back a few years now. My memory is not what it used to be. I mean, Salandris, well, there was, there was, he had a whole family. From what I understand, his brother died fighting forces, the Archfey. They were proud, noble warriors, both he and his brother. His brother died out on patrol. And he had a sister, I believe. Never quite sure what happened to her. I think she may have even married into one of the other spires. Perhaps even the Summer Spire, I believe. There was a scandal. I remember I had to leave urgently. There was a meeting called. It had never happened before. Nobility of one of the spires marrying into another. But we determined it was for love. Why? Who are we to stop it? Was Salandris mad enough not to want to talk about her anymore? I mean... Ah, uh, Salandris is... He's a good friend. We have fought together side by side, and he has always done what is best for the elven people. He has a very difficult task. The winter, the whole of the Winter Spy does. And that is why I have the utmost respect for him. But he has always been very tactical, very logical. He thinks before he feels. I don't believe he would let something like anger really get to him in that regard. I believe he probably would have been upset but not enough to certainly take action. But I never remember, I don't remember what happened to her. I can't, her name was Vail, Vail, something V, I can't remember. So many other noble families, it's very difficult to remember them all. Hmm. Juto just seems to think that there's something going on, the way well, they've been acting. I'm not, no offense to your little friend, but she is a bit 
jumpy. I mean, you saw the way that she jumped on those hill giants. She's a bit of a firecracker. I know Salandris. Your mother knows Salandris. We have known each other for a very long time. He's in a very difficult position. I'm sure that they, all families have their own secrets. We do too, sometimes. There are a couple of things that we know that we don't share with the other spires for fear that they may worry about it. It's just the way that things are sometimes. I'm sure it's all fine, little bee. Okay. He just gives you a hug. Hmm. Try and relax. Okay. Well. We're, we're well protected here. I guess we'll get to properly meet him at dinner. Yes, yes. Although, if you can, do have a word with Cam. He might need to be on good behavior. Okay. You know what he's like. I don't, I don't think Salandris would appreciate rectum as much as I do. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any, uh... Pardon? <laughs> he laughs. He's like, ha, ha, rectum. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any, uh, any other things that we shouldn't bring up? Any delicate subjects that we should know about? I don't want to offend anyone. Dead sons. I would worry about mentioning his son, but I also do wish to know the circumstances so that we can proper, properly offer our condolences. I'll try and bring it up, but if you think of a clever way to do it, that may be better. Or perhaps it may even be better coming from one of your friends, as they are a bit outsiders. Apart from that, not really. Although there is something I've been meaning to talk to you a little bit about. When we get back to the spire, when we get back to the moon spire, there's something your mother and I need to give you. It's a bit of a family heirloom. We'll give it to you when we get back home, though. We keep it there safe. We keep it safe. We keep it secret. Is it a ring? No, it is not a ring. Damn. No, it's it's a gift that's been passed through our family, and it's about time I think you had it. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll I'll think about how to talk to him. Yes. This evening. That would be good. I it's yes. It'll be difficult for me and your mother. It'll be a difficult subject to approach. But I would like to know. Hmm, definitely. It right. might be why things are so strange. Hmm, yes, I imagine so. Okay, well, I will see you at dinner, get some rest. I will. Have another nap. What? I don't take naps. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> he just, like, mutters off as he leaves. At this point, you two arrive back in the room with Juto, who is just in there on her own. I am, uh... Not talking to Trell. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are you doing the whole Juto, can you pouting. tell the other person? <laughs> I'm pouting. <laughs> okay. Get awfully quiet again. I need some more grapes. <laughs> <laughs> I go to the kitchen. Do you go to Polto? <laughs> yeah, I try. Yeah, you go back. He's like, hello, you want more grapes? Yes. There you go. <laughs> he just piles you with grapes. Thank you. I just leave with grapes. Okay. And kind of sulk in a chair. Okay. Do you guys want to do anything before the dinner? Can I talk with Crown Rand? Oh, I love it when you talk to Crown Rand. Of course you can. Mm. Crown Rand. Yes. Are you beginning to see, little demon? What is your opinion of Lady Silval? They cannot be trusted. This opulent palace, these guards, they are like everything I have told you. <laughs> Oh, hey. You enjoy this. I love too I love my family. It is literally, yeah, he's good oh, man. Opulent is definitely the word. The talk of creation. To me, it is a task for those who are entitled to luxury. They are egotistical. They believe themselves greater than you or I or your allies. And your friend, Elora. She is captivated by it. She becomes like them. No, she doesn't. You will see, little demon. Beyond Elora, who is not to be talked about in that fashion. What are you seeing that I'm not seeing here? Something's not right. My vision and understanding is limited. I sense only what is around you, but there are secrets here. Unspoken lies. That is all I know. But 
when you need me, our power grows stronger. Yet, soon we will achieve true unity. And with that, he goes silent. Okay, Elora makes her way back into the room. Yeah. Trell and Cam awkwardly <laughs> aren't talking to each other. Juto's doing her creepy meditative talking to Crown Rend. Have, have we got time for any sort of a rest? You've got like a good like three hours, so you can take a short rest. I'm for dinner. going to take a short rest and just turn to Cam and say, just going to have a rest, you know, think I might need to keep good. the strength up. Good, Yeah, you'll need it. It is always wise to be on your guard. Um... Yeah, I did. <laughs> I did speak to my father about dinner tonight, and um, he thinks you should perhaps maybe be on good behaviour. You're looking at the wrong guy. Charles over there. I'm looking at both of you. you can't. Whatever's, Me. whatever's going on just now can't happen over the dinner table. Nothing's going on. Nothing's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Said, Why are you crying? <laughs> <laughs> it's the grapes. <laughs> Too sweet. This family is in a difficult position at the moment. And so we what, just the need dead, to... The dead son. Yes. We the need dead to son. Not What's his bring name? that... <sighs> How are you he... asking DM or are you no, asking... asking yeah, no, that's fine. It's Who Dath- Who's the dead son again? <laughs> is it Dathomir? Uh, Dathomir? You heard it as Dathomir. Dathomir. <laughs> Dathomir. Dathomir. What? Dathomir. Dathomir. But Sounds stupid, doesn't it? No wonder he... How did he uh, die? <laughs> <laughs> we don't know how he died, but it's a very sensitive subject. I may ask them. Do we think Juto should it's bring it up? It's a very delicate subject, is what I'm saying. Is just that... Death is a part of life. Yes, <laughs> but I've never met... Salandris before, and if what Nalistri's been telling us, and he is as, as cold and cruel as he sounds, then I don't know what will cause him to get aggressive, and I don't want to offend. Discretion and is the better part of valour. Yeah, what, 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 what he said. said. I don't understand why you two are looking at me. I'm You're looking at him when the two of you are clearly more interested in chasing skirt. <laughs> she wasn't wearing a skirt. <laughs> I don't think. No, she was wearing tight leggings. <laughs> I'm just thinking about that. Now. <laughs> Cam just like, he stops. He's like, mm, yeah, no, she wasn't wearing a skirt. Okay. I'm just in my own thoughts now. Okay. All right. Anybody do want to say anything else? Or I can click the fingers and do the time skip. Look, if you want me to bring it up, I'm good with people. I can do that for you, Laura. I think it's a bit of a delicate subject. Really. I don't know if we should bring it up. But I think the way that he died should... It's, nobody knows how he died. It's, hey, Juto. My father said he's going to try and talk, but... Hey, I'll just let the king do it. He knows him, he's a good friend, right? It's still a very touchy subject, and for... <laughs> I don't think he wants to risk... What about Elisri? <coughs> I don't know. I haven't asked Elisri. Maybe we should just ask him. Mm. You can go find him, you've still got time. You've got loads of time. You, know where his, you two know where his room is. <coughs> You seem to be on better terms than you were originally. I yeah. think he might be more open to you. I don't really know how to approach it with him either. It's a bit... Just knock on the door and go, excuse me, what happened to your dead brother? It's, it's a <laughs> bit, it's, I mean, it's a bit weird, isn't it? That could be good. No, there you Straight go, to the point. <laughs> Get up there and go ask. Oh, I, d- <laughs> like me. <laughs> Maybe I'll see how dinner goes. If anything, if there's a moment that seems appropriate. Okay, sure. I don't... Fully care enough. <laughs> <laughs> I just want grapes. <laughs> well, as 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 a member of a different spire, I don't want to. I don't want to initiate any conflict between our spires. You do what you elves do, and I'll stay out of it. On a side note, Kim speaking here. What are we doing at the Winter Spire? <laughs> I know we're here doing like. We didn't know where them. it was. Right. Okay. So we're trying to We've... reconnect because we'd. Without Nalistri coming to get us and take us to this bar, right, we didn't where it know was. where it was. Okay, but so you know that they're in a state of chaos and like they're better than they were. Okay, but that's so, what we're here to find out. So what we're on a diplomat happened. mission. 
Pretty much. Pretty much. You brought it's us very much. It's yeah. very much Elora's <laughs> diplomatic mission. And you brought and us. And you three have come as guards because <clears throat> you were guarding. Not fellow diplomats. No, you guys were very much brought here to help accompany Elora and her family. That's very much the way that it was kind of sold. Now we, now we've got Miss Fiery Fingers so over here in an ice palace. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Blast him up the rectum over here. That's very true. <laughs> and Mr. Thinks with his natural 20 over here. So That's yeah, true. top <laughs> diploma, uh, diplomat choices here, you know. That's fine, you're not here as diplomats, you're here as fucking meat shields. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Which you are good at, so. Yeah. Okay, go. back in the RP. Right, okay. So, are you going to go speak to the or are you just going to cut to dinner? No, I'm going to go to dinner. Cut to dinner. What? A few hours later. <laughs> the attendant leads you through the winter spire. Night has fallen earlier than expected in the troubled lands, and the stars and moon shine brightly through the beautiful frost-rimmed windows of the tower. Torches of magical light illuminate the spire itself, casting a gentle glow that sparkles and reflects off the faux ice decor and silver embellishments. And eventually you are led into the grand dining room. The glass table is covered with platters and dishes, some heated from below by a glowing stone. A chandelier hovers in the air above the table itself, casting a gentle light. The Frostwalker family are already seated. Cylandrus Frostwalker sits at the head of the table, dressed in thick but regal blue and white robes, a thin silver circlet around his head, and a black and grey hair, and his black and grey hair pulled back into a ponytail. Next to him, on his left, sits Malice Endel Frostwalker, his wife, and Duchess of Winter. She wears a pale blue and dark purple dress with a fur wrap around her shoulders, and a silver pendant rests around her slender but ageing neckline. The chair to the right of Cylandrus is empty, though it is still set for dinner. Silval, the daughter that Tricam and Trelamar in particular were interested in, sits next to her mother and wears the same outfit you saw her win before, though she doesn't have her sword. <coughs> Nelistri is sat next to the empty space and has a sullen and sad expression on his face. As you enter, um, attendants lead you to seats, but does anybody have any particular where they would like to sit? I'm nice following Alora. To my parents. I oh, figure that you would be sat next to them. Mm-hmm. Um, Silval looks over at the two of you because oh there God. is an empty space next to her, and there is a moment of like who I is going sit to next sit next to her. <laughs> <laughs> As you two are like looking at each other, Juto just moves very quickly and sits next to you, and she just kind of like she gives you a polite nod. <laughs> and I'm then oblivious. Is, then there is a casting glance yeah. to these two of like you fucked up. I'm oblivious to yep. these two. Um, I'm going to sit next to King Alphadon. Alphadon. Okay. If I can. Okay. The Queen's not next to you. Uh, well, Eletha, it would probably go like Elora, Eletha, Alphadon, you, uh, Shalana, Pala sit next to you, and then these two are on the other side. Absolutely. So you've got Juto between you and Silval, basically. Okay. Um, as you all sat down, the servants begin bringing out you know, pitchers of water and things like that. <laughs> uh, Lord Salandris stands and bows his head deeply. Uh, my fellow Lord and Lady. My elven kin, my honoured guests, I, Salandrus Frostwalker, Duke of Winter, welcome you to our spire. Please may you sit with us and enjoy the hospitality of my home. And he bows his head, and at this point, the attendants all bring out, start bringing out plates of food <coughs> and dinner, breads, appetizers, that sort of thing. Um, in terms of food, there's things like you get braised beef with like poached pears and gingers. Uh, smoked salmon, baked sweet potatoes, um, cheeses, smoked sausages, that sort of thing, vegetables, breads, oils, that sort of thing, loads of different stuff. Also, Polto the, the satyr brings out, he brings out a big steaming soup bowl for Juto specifically uh, that has a very fiery, fragrant aroma. Um, it's heavily very tomato and oniony, but you can definitely smell there's a lot of peppers and spice that he's put in there. It's just like, it, it makes your nose flare up and you know, it kind of clears the sinuses. For the first time in days, I actually might feel happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, Don't smile. There is also a lot of drink on the table. There is wine, water and juices. Not as much alcohol <coughs> as you was expecting. Um, but yeah, there is like wine and things if you wish to have that. Um, and yeah, you all sat down. Um, and, you know, people begin eating and you start making your way. And general kind of idle chatter kind of comes across. Lord Salandris looks up, he's like, I am very gracious to you for coming to my Frostbire. It has been too long that our elven kin have been apart. I am glad to see you, Alphadon. And Alphadon looks at him, he's like, And I you, Salandras, it has been too long that our people have been apart. And luckily, thanks to the works of Elora, my daughter, we have managed to meet at least one other. And he gestures towards Queen Shalana. Salandras looks over to you, Elora. Yes, 
Lady Alora, you have my great thanks. You have done a great service for the Elven people. By finding Queen Shalana, I am to understand that you helped repel some sort of invasion of their home. Yes, um, it was Archfey. It was, there was some kind of a tribe of orcs that had been infected. <coughs> yes, as is the way of the Archfey. My people have fought them for many years, along with the Summerspire. They are very tricky and use misdirection and tactics, often employing savages like mm. these orcs to do their work for them. But still, you have done a great service for our people, and I am very gracious to you and your allies as well. I wish to honor you, and he looks to Trelamar, Juto, and, and Cam. He's like hacking away at just like Bray's beef. Like, like so you know, it squeaks on the yeah, plate. Like, <laughs> it's just like, <coughs> <coughs> oh. And I wish to thank to your allies as well. <coughs> Were it not for you, it would be very difficult for our people to reconnect. So you have my thanks. I it's hope that you enjoy our fare. Palto, my chef, has been a long friend of the family, and I am quite fond of his food. And he kind of like looks over to his wife, uh, Melisandre, and she's just like, yes, he has always been a welcome friend of our family. His food is quite delicious. I hope you enjoy it. Um, Mr. Aleith, I am to understand that you are some sort of spellcaster as well. I am also trained in the arcane arts. Uh, your pet, your pseudo-dragon, mm -hmm. is quite sweet. Does it have a name? Granamir. Granamir, interesting. She kind of like looks at him interestingly. Very rare pseudo-dragons these days, not seen often. You are quite fortunate to have one. She kind of like bows her head. She seems to be quite respectful of, of Grandma. Because he's kind of like go over. <laughs> uh, again, you get that kind of sense of like not sure. Strangers mm. don't want to. He's like. Nah. <laughs> he's just like eating to. a grape. He's just like. Nah. What? <laughs> is the grape like what size is the grape in comparison to his little? Like he's like a squirrel, so he's holding it like this. He's like. Nah, 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 nah. That's adorable. This is super cute. He's licking all the juice. Can we hear more about Gran like yeah. just Granamir? Just, like, just can we just, whatever our video time this session, can we just hear about Granamir? Tasty grape. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much it. He's just like, more food. Try to have more food. <laughs> like you keep passing him like little bits and he keeps eating. Tiny grapes. Just yeah. Tiny grapes. Um, and yeah, like the conversation is stilted and a little bit awkward. Uh, Silval, give me insight checks, the two of you. Um, oh, for God's having sake. Can glances. I roll one too? You can roll no, one too. <coughs> Fuck it. Oh, damn. No. Oh. Six. <laughs> 20. 12. 27. 27. Wow. Whoa. She Christ. is. You're kind of on the opposite side of the table to her. <coughs> and you suddenly just start feeling something touching your foot. And then you look up at her, and she kind of gives you a slight eye raise, very subtle. Um, but you can also get the sense that she's very annoyed that Juto's next to her and not Trelamar. Like, she's definitely kind of trying to send signals to both of you at this point. What if Juto is interested? Ju well, Juto, you pick up on that she is absolutely fucking footsie and cam under the table. And, like, she's definitely, like, giving in the eyebrow raises and stuff. But she doesn't seem very interested in you. She's kind of just being polite, um, not really engaging you in conversation. I'm going to start twirling my, uh, my knife just around my fingers and stuff, just okay. starting to show off. Give me a perform check. Yeah, Fuck. do it. <laughs> no! Is it natural one? It's a two. Oh. Seven. Uh, woof! <laughs> and then the knife just flies through the air. At, towards thuds, the king? Uh, it, it thuds into a pot of stew on the table, just bloop! And there is an awkward moment of silence. Alpha Don is like... <laughs> 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 but desperately trying to keep it in. Excuse um, me, um, Knife back. <laughs> not, not on your life, boy. <laughs> 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 like under his breath. Uh, a servant comes over, gestures, and with a little bit of magic, this this knife just floats out. Not still slowly. Still dripping Please in like not stew. Slowly. Just very slowly puts it next, and just napkin it. wipes it all off, and then like leaves it. <clears throat> I am going to telepathically uh, say to uh, Silval. Silval uh -huh. I'm going to say, as you can see. Cam isn't very good when it comes to his hands. <laughs> oh, for <laughs> okay. okay. She can't reply to you. She's just like, you, she kind of looks over and she's just like, oh, it must be interesting traveling with such an unusual companion, Trevor Well, interesting is one word for it. Indeed. While they're talking, I'm just trying to block the line of sight. <laughs> she's like constantly trying to like, peer <coughs> around you. Uh, as it, yeah, it's very awkward. Um, your father kind of like looks over at you and he's kind of like, he kind of like tries to gesture towards Salandris, like, are you ask him kind of thing. I look at, I look at Laura. Do you want me to bring up the dead son? <laughs> <coughs> there were 
Alphadon covers it. He's like, <laughs> when you say dead son, he's like, <laughs> sorry, I have a bit of beef in my throat. <laughs> he's like trying to help cover it's it. It's really basically. tough, isn't it? Yeah, it's very tough. Delicious though, delicious. <laughs> Left is just like nudging him in the side. <laughs> Can I roll a... Uh, I don't know if it'll be insight or perception, but I just, you know, due to her being the kind of suspicious mm -hmm. child she is, yeah. I just want to, you know, what's going on with the, the you know, what's going on? Is there, is there, sure. is there mm -hmm. anyone acting sketchy? Perception. <coughs> if you're looking around and stuff. Um, Salandris just looks over, he's like, I know that you have travelled a long way, and there is something I did wish to discuss with you. Alpha Don, Shalana, I our people are too apart. We need to find a way to bring the Elven Spires together. I worry that since our return to this material plane, Shilana, your spire, has come under attack, as has mine. I do not know which state your spire is in, Alphadon, but we must unite the Elven people at some point. This, We must bring them together somewhere. Shilana's just like, I do agree, Lord Salandris. I feel that we need to become, we need to unite as a people. Elora has done excellent work to that, and. We have made some firm allies with the humans of the Dawn Republic. Uh, they have a particular champion that Alphadon knows very well. We would serve them well to, to be their allies. Uh, what'd you get on your check? A whopping five. You're like looking around, like <laughs> desperately, kind of like peering at everybody. Nothing seems out of the It looks like a kind of awkward dinner with a bunch of fancy people. Um, there is definitely. Rich entitled people. Salandris looks very tired and he looks very sort of drained. His wife, kind of, you can see that she deeply cares for him. He, she's watching him with very. a lot of compassion and worry. Um, but she, you know, she places his hand on his arm as he's speaking and he, like, looks at it back and, like, takes her hand. He's like, it's fine. Um, and yeah, there's just, like, a moment of sort of, like, awkward upset in a way. <laughs> yeah, we have made. Um... We've made some progress. We've also made some some very, very strong allies. And even with the Autumn Spire, with all the trouble with the orcs, we actually came across a half-orc, um, Falk. He's been working with Shalana and Pela and connecting with the champion. This is, this is very good, but I, perhaps this is just my, based on our experience, but perhaps we should be a bit more. We should look to our own people for a while. I worry about the other spires. We have still not been able to contact them. Perhaps once we have found the others, perhaps once we have secured our borders, found a way to bring the spires themselves together somewhere, then we can seek to look to aid these other allies. But I do worry. I do worry. I don't think we should rule them out. So far, I have been traveling with companions who are not elves, and they have proven very worthy in battle and very loyal. I don't think we should alienate ourselves. No, no, you are right, of course, but uh, perhaps a bit of time, and perhaps this is a conversation for folks like your father and myself and Shalana on a more overall scale, but uh, I just fear that we should ensure that our people are all right first. I hope you understand what I mean. Very well. Okay. Um, I whisper, you look good to me. And I looked at Queen Shalana. Oh, I'm look. Okay. You look fine to me, as in, he's just said, make sure our people look okay. Okay. Yeah. She like looks at you and she's like, yes, thank you, Ken. I'm, I'm well. Good. Plato just like leans around and like just shakes like, her head. I kind of at you. like <laughs> lean back. <laughs> Uh, no, 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 she kind of like grins and she's like, actually, that is something, Sh this is Queen Shalana, her kind of auburn golden hair stands up. There is something that I wish to say, speaking of bringing our people together, I am quite pleased that um, Paler did actually propose to me this evening, so. And she kind of looks and Paler kind of like takes her hand and she's just like, it's something that we've spoken about for a long time, but it is time. And um, you see Alphadon kind of grins wildly and he kind of claps his hand. He's like, this is excellent news. I did worry that you had been too alone. Um, I'm pleased, I'm pleased about this. Salan just kind of looks over and he's like, I'm glad to hear that the Autumn Spire will continue to reign, but I do wonder, what will you do of heirs? We must ensure that your line continues. And they seem to be a, get a bit awkward, Shivana and Pedro, like, look at each other, and it's like, we will cross that bridge, I think, once things are settled, but um, I do understand, Lord Salan just, we must ensure that the Elven nobility continues. And he's just like, good, yes, excellent. Uh, just I'm just slack-jawed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna clap with excitement. Can I just say not as Juto, but as Kim? I'm just like yes, because Juto OTB doesn't care. Juto does, yes, yeah. Juto secretly right. No, Laura, Laura's really happy. Yeah, she's just. Laura kind of like looks over to you and she's just like, and it's very kind of like Paler's like, 
Yes, well, we have other things to attend to first, but obviously you will be invited to the celebrations. We will likely host them in the Autumn Spire. I will ensure that there is a security detail prepared for all of you. Um, <laughs> she's like brushing herself off, by, like wearing her gold and red sort of uh, soldier's uniform. Can I be a bridesmaid? Is it you asking his duty? <laughs> No, she wouldn't. No, she wouldn't. Um, so just well. But can I? <laughs> maybe. We'll find out. Whole episode there. Um, at this point, does anybody else wish to say anything? Um, we'll let that pass for a bit, and then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, this is like a long evening of talking and interacting. So there's plenty of like dips and lows. Yeah. Whenever you guys aren't saying anything in particular, the conversation is very mundane. Mundane. Alphadon asks about the defenses and how it's been here in the wintry area. Like he asks about you know things are going and stuff like that. Um, it's very kind of idle chatter, really. Uh, so, um, Lord and Lady, uh, I couldn't help but notice the beautiful portrait of Dathomir you have. As you say that, home. they do. Salandris especially goes very quiet. He has a very sad look on his face, and it's actually uh, Malice Endel, his wife. He says, thank you, Lady Alora, that is very kind, yes. Unfortunately, yes, I'm sure that others, and they kind of look over at Middle Eastry, have mentioned, uh, we lost our son, Dathomir, when we first arrived here from the Fae. Um, he was attacked out with a scout patrol and lost his life. That it is, is very tragic. Kind of we, have, we have laid some flowers by his portrait. Uh, that is very kind of you, thank I'm you. very sorry for your loss. Is, and Sirenius <laughs> is just like, thank you, Lady Alora. Can I insight check to make sure when she was saying he was attacked? When yeah, sure, absolutely. Give me an insight check. Damn. <sighs> I want to do. I rolled that. a four, so probably yeah, not. Yeah, you can all roll it. Like it's because you guys are paying quite close attention to them. You would be sort of analysing. Eighteen. Twenty-one. Twenty. Twenty-one. Mm. Right. Jesus. Three of you. All three of you. <laughs> there is. Trillion. There is deep <clears throat> sadness in these two as they're kind of talking about their their lost son. Um. When she says that they, he was attacked uh, with a scouting party, there is no evidence that they are lying. Okay, cool. Um, so I just kind of says, like, yes, I, I suppose I best speak on this subject. It has been too long, but my son lost his life when we returned from the Feywild. We sent scouting parties out to investigate the area. We found a whole party dead, and my son gone, ravaged by some beast. It is very tragic, and he was a fine warrior. I, I do worry what may have hurt him, and I hope that it is not still out there preying upon my people. <clears throat> you haven't seen anything else of the sort since then? No, no. You say gone, as in there was a body, or...? There's like an awkward silence, and Salandris kind of looks quite pained. And it's actually Nalistri who speaks up, and he's like, <clears throat> yes, Juto, there was. Um, we sent guards. My father went with them himself. And then we found the body out in the snow, uh, ravaged. Uh, I examined it myself. There was teeth marks on the beast that had assaulted him. Uh, Tanned his throat, uh, ripped out his limbs. It was, it was, it was very bad. And, you, and that's the first time he's spoken all evening, and... You guys, you would notice Salandris's eyes just narrow when Lily Street's speaking, but he does not say anything. His eyes just go quite narrow. It is as Lily Street says, yes. And that's it. That's it. And then the conversation at this point is now silence. <laughs> so, um, we're going to take a quick break because it's half six. So, we're going to take a five minute break for the loo and to get some drink. Damn. And then we'll be back with more. High rollers action. To cut this tension with a knife. Touch it with a knife. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Bye for now.
Thank you. Hi, welcome back. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure I knew when we were going live then, so thank you, Sam, for like letting me know. Um, welcome back. Hope you had a nice break. We did. <coughs> Trot made some tea. Um, it's all good. And so, a little bit of note passing went on while you weren't oh here God. in preparation. So, we were having, there was a, a dinner happening between nice dinner. all of the elven no nobility, some awkward conversation, and during a particularly tense moment of silence, after Nalisri helped explain something to do about um, the, uh, his dead brother, uh, Dathomir, um, a guard basically bursts into the dining room. Oh my, my lord, uh, so, I'm so sorry to interrupt your dinner. There is a commotion at the gate. There, there is a mob. Some of the local settlements. Some they, they are, they have strange weapons. They're gathering at the gate. Something about their people being killed. Um, we're sending some armed men to deal with them, but I thought I should let you know immediately. They, they are carrying strange devices. I've never seen anything like it before. Um, and Sir Andrew just looks up. And he's just like, very well. I will come with you. And he stands up. He's like, fetch me my blade. Uh, my son, stay here. And then, like, he basically goes to leave. Alphadon also stands up, he's like, hold on a minute, Sir Landris, we'll come with you. And he like gets up to go as well. And he can't just have the king on his own, right? Yeah. And like, Alphadon's like, come on then. Like gets up. Um, and basically you guys make your way out with a, a, a small regiment of soldiers, uh, of French Prospire soldiers. Um, and you're basically led out onto the spire towards the main ward gate into the settlement. And you can see through the metal bars of this kind of portcullis into the snow wall, there is a maybe 20 or so humans, or kind of mixed, you see some like orcs and half orcs and stuff, and a couple of dwarves and that as well, um, gathered outside, each carrying torches. Uh, the one who seems to be in the front leading them is wearing a thick, long, kind of duster-like coat with a big, thick fur interior. And what looks to be, I can only describe it as a cowboy hat. Basically, he's got kind of like a big Stetson. You can see he's wearing thick leather boots, uh, thick trousers, like just definitely dressed for winter. Uh, no, it's a brown hat. Brown hat. Um, and he's basically got some sort of metal device in his hand and he's got a torch in the other. And you can see that behind them there is a group and they're all carrying spears and pitchforks or torches. And then one next to him is holding this very long wooden, it looks almost like a club, but it's got like a metal tube down the middle. And they're all hand stood there and uh, you can hear like just a general like blah, 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 blah. and as you're getting closer you can hear the guards on the main gate they're just like back off now humans we won't hesitate if you bring force here we will evict you from this area and you can just hear like i'd like to see you try you ain't gonna move us like you killed our people and all this kind of like shouting going on so Andrus approaches he's like what is going on here what is happening um and the soldiers turn around like they're just a bit out of nowhere sir and uh, the man in the hat kind of like steps forward and you can now see he's got like a really grizzled face, dark skin, kind of like greyish kind of beard. Looks a bit like Idris Elba. And he kind of like leans in and he's just like, I'm looking to speak to someone in charge. Is that you? And he kind of points at Salandris. And he goes like, I'm the lord of this spire, yes. Who are you? What do you want? Why are you people here? And he's, the, uh, the gentleman turns around and he's like, a number of our people have been killed torn apart by wolves or animals or some such. And my scouts have seen wolves hanging around this tower that suddenly appeared out of nowhere a few months ago. Are you behind this? Have you been keeping these beasts, letting them loose on our people? And you can see that the guards are just like, do you not know who you speak to? This is a Lord Salandris. He has health nobility. And like, you can see like things are getting quite tense um, as things erupt. And you can see Salandris, there is the mention of like the animals being killed and the accusation levied against him, he's getting pretty furious. You can see this cold kind of fury. He's just like, how dare you? How dare you? My people have not left this settlement. We've been defending ourselves. Don't you dare accuse me of such matters. You know nothing. Um, and like you can see the crowd starting to get levied up and uh, the man holding this kind of long wooden club with his metal tube, he's just, he seems to squeeze something, and there is this cacophonous explosion, this bang. And all the soldiers instantly kind of like reach for their like swords and things like that, desperately looking around, trying to see the source of this. Uh, the man in the, the hat and the trench coat kind of holds his hand and he's like, Who did that? Keep your damn arms safe. And he like looks around, he's like, All right. Now, if you weren't responsible for this, maybe you know something about who does. My people are being killed out there, and I don't have time to mess around with some fancy pants elf. So what's going on here? And he kind of looks over, he's like, you, human, are you with these people? You know what's going on here? Yes. Good choice to talk to me. 
<laughs> I am an ambassador. Really? For the humans. You. You people. Like, we're all equals here. We do not need to be bearing arms or arms with bears. Please, Look. tell us what's happened. We are just as confused as you are just now. He kind of levels it. He's like, all right, calm down. He turns to the rest. He's like, my name's Sheriff Macklin. I'm from a little town called Hallow. It's a few hours away from here. Now, over the last few days, a number of my people, good people, have been torn apart by creatures or something. Now, like I mentioned, my scouts, they tracked wolves to this here spire. Or at least they've been around the area. Now, as this thing has, play has popped out of nowhere recently, I'm not sure what to make of it. Never seen anything like it before, and I'm mighty suspicious. I don't want to speak for the king. Uh, the lord of this winter spire. However, he has also had a tragedy upon his family and has also lost a life to this wolf or creature thing. Sandra just kind of looks at you momentarily and bows his head. The uh, the man in the hat is just like Macklin Sheriff, the Macklin, the man who introduced himself, is like, he takes off his hat and you can see he's kind of got like short, kind of cropped black hair. He's like, well, I'm very sorry to hear about that. You must understand that we didn't know and I'm just trying to look out for my people. I'm sorry, my lord. And he looks at Salandris. Salandris kind of bows his head. He's just like, we have both lost people then. I'm sorry for yours. Uh, I'm afraid I don't know anything. My, as mentioned by this ambassador. Of the people. Yes. Uh, I have lost some scouting parties to such creatures, including my son. <coughs> I'm sorry, I cannot spare forces to investigate. I'm too busy securing my own settlement. Um, I wish that I could help. And the man in the hat just looks back. He's like, well, I understand. I hope you don't mind. I might have my people around your land searching, if that's all right. And he's just like, very well, if that is what you require. And then he kind of, and the least he kind of steps forward, and he's just like, I could help. Me too. And the least looks at you, just kind of suddenly, he's like, bows his head. Um, yes, it, Father, I can go. You don't need me here anyway. I, I can go and investigate. Um, uh, perhaps if Lady Allura and the others could come with me, that that, that might be all right. I'm, so that, I'm trained as a druid. Maybe I could understand some of these animals' patterns. Well, we madly could use someone with a bit of magical knowledge. It's not something we've got a lot of in Hallow. Uh, Salan just kind of just bows his head. He's like, very well in the history, if you wish to help. You Why? would do a great service for them. Why do you not offer these people help and aid? Because Both of you are in the same circumstance. If you team up, you're stronger than if you work alone. <coughs> people are limited, Tiefling. I must protect them before I can help others. He has people who can join your forces. Perhaps. Perhaps. But for now, my concern is my lads. If you wish to help, you would be doing us both a great favor, and I would be very grateful. But I cannot think of them before I think of my family. And with that, he kind of bows his head and goes to leave. Well, I've got loads of sharp objects. I like to stab a fool. Well, that would be mighty useful. We got plenty of those, though. But uh, I could use a second pair of eyes if you don't mind. Especially if y'all got some nature magic or some such. Might be mighty useful. What? Did, what? What? What was that explosion? What was that? Ah, it's one of our uh, hecklers. Spell? No, no, it's uh, it's a long story, but uh, if you might, if you want to travel with me to Hallow, I can show you the way, show you these bodies, and I can explain a little bit about our black powder. Do you have a spare hat? Nope. Just this one. He puts it back on his head. There'll be a dead man who takes this hat off my head that ain't me. Well, they wouldn't be able to take it; they'd be dead. Exactly. <laughs> well, then, how would they take it off your head? Exactly. Ain't nobody taking my hat. Oh, I get it. And he winks at you. Cool. Sounds dreamy. Mighty fine, thank you, ma'am. I didn't say that. <laughs> I did not say that out loud. <laughs> at least, at least, she's just like, it's all right, gods. Um, I'll, I'll accompany Lady Alora and the others. Uh, we'll, we'll investigate. And they kind of like look at the least like that's the first time he's ever spoken to the guards in his life. I'm like, uh, very well, very well, uh, Lord the least And they kind of back know. off. Speak up loud so that the okay. king can hear. Okay, yeah, so he's like, kind of making his way back. Well, so long as Nalistri is leading us, we'll be perfectly fine. Nalistri just kind of cringes. You saw how he handled Melody. 
Yeah. Extremely adeptly with that manticore. Please stop. <laughs> really good. Please stop. Please with like weapons. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> no, that's uh, true. We could use some of your illusions, though. That, that would be very yeah. helpful. I, I just want to be useful. Walls. And let's be honest, that's it's not true. exactly like I'm enjoying a cheery visit home, so I'd be grateful to have the distraction. If you wouldn't mind accompanying me, we can at least try and help both of these people. Mm -hmm. Delora, maybe make sure your parents don't get involved. Yeah, they're not coming. No, I think we best leave them here. We can go, we'll be, if, sorry, you human with the hat, um, how long did you say, how far away? <coughs> oh, uh, how long was only a few hours, two or three, but uh, it's dangerous out here on the tundra. Uh, so if you come back with us, we can make sure you don't get attacked by bears or get picked up in a snowdrift or anything like that. If you don't mind, that's it. That's it. I'll go and speak to my parents. Are they right next to me still? Yeah, I mean, you, you, well, they're currently, like, Alphadon's there, and he seems to be speaking to Salandris, but he kind of gives you a knowing look of, like, if you need to speak to him, or, like, he's going to stay behind. Uh, he seems to be talking to Salandris and trying to kind of calm him down and comfort him a bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was Kim speaking. <laughs> what? I just, he's a wanker! <laughs> Um, I'll say to my mother, mm -hmm. make sure he doesn't come after us, make sure he stays here. <laughs> she just nods. <laughs> She's just like, he won't be going on any adventures for a while. Stay within oh, the yes, spire. Of course, if there's beasts out there. But you be careful as well. I know you can look after yourselves, but do be careful. This we is a un land unfamiliar to all of us. We will try our best. Hopefully we'll get to the bottom of what's been happening. Yes, it would be it good would to... It would be good for Salandris to have some peace of mind. Indeed, exactly my thoughts. If we can perhaps bring him some peace of mind, perhaps he may change a little, be a bit more accommodating to ideas. Yes. I fear that his his worry for the elven people is stemmed because of the loss of his son. Well, we need to work with others. Yes. He still has one son who remains. <laughs> yes, and... Maybe with Nelistri's help, maybe if we can solve this problem for him, it will finally get through to him. I do not like the way he treats Nelistri. He should be grateful for having family. True that. Uh, the man at the, the Macklin, the man who introduced himself. Did y'all want to come with us now, or you can find your way? I can return in the morning, lead you back. It's getting quite a late. Yeah. Uh, do we want to? We don't want to travel in the evening. It's a bit dangerous. I mean, we've got a big group, but we know these lands better than y'all. I can come back in the morning. Yeah, I've got plans tonight. I would like to go with you. I do not wish to sleep at this spire. All right. And then least she's like, I will also go with you too. Make sure she's all right. We'll come find you in the morning. You sure that's a good idea, Juto? This place is too rich for me. What do you mean? Like, is it the grapes? I'm just, I'm not listening to you anymore. <laughs> It's fine. Uh, Juto and I will be I don't right. think we should split up. I think we should all go. I am with Nelistri. It's lit alone. It's fine. I um, think we should all go. Ah. Uh, but I had plans. And, uh, I do not require the human by my side. Well, that Juto shouldn't go into the... Juto, it will be safer to travel in the day. I have the sheriff, the people, and Elistri. You just met these people and they came at I trust this tower. The the elves in this well, there was weapons. a bit of a misunderstanding there. But Is that how you do all diplomatic negotiations? Uh, around here, yeah. Oh. In these parts, that's pretty much how it's done. We call it aggressive negotiations. And you want to go with that? My kind of people. <laughs> Look, it's up to y'all. I can take the uh, strange girl with me, along with the elf, or I can come back in the morning, but... Uh, it's really no problem. Let's all go together. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Told you I was going to cock block you both. <laughs> God damn it. Okay. What are you doing? He said either either you can come now or he or he can come back in the morning. He didn't say. You can do both. Well, you can do both. Yeah. He the, the implication being that yeah, like Juto if some of you want to stay behind, you can stay Juto behind. Juto just does not want to sleep. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, that's your she character. She doesn't like it. She it's doesn't up, like the surroundings. But it's also, if Cam wants to stay behind, it's up to Cam. If Trevor wants you to stay behind, you are independent it's up to people. So it's, you guys can do what you want. I sigh heavily, and shrug. Like, let's go. Let's go. I didn't want to embarrass Trevor anyway. <sighs> Very well, let's go. Only if you're sure, but all right, let's move. And uh, 
as a group, you head off. <laughs> Shame. <laughs> so, you guys travel for about two hours. The night is bitterly cold, horrifically cold. Um, it takes you a good hour, the torch is leading the way. The rabble seem quite um, suspicious of you. Uh, only really the man in the hat is at any point conversational. Uh, as you make your way back, he explains a little bit. I don't know if you folks uh, understand a lot about out here, but basically north of the Republic and the Troubled Lands, each town is kind of a law unto itself. We don't really have any formal government out here. Uh, just whoever's got the biggest cojones, they are in charge. And in that case, it's me. Uh, What's try a and keep cojones? Testicles. <laughs> you measure your... Figurative. ...leadership by ball size. Figurative. <laughs> Mine are tiny. <laughs> All right. Didn't need to know that, but... Uh, anyway, so Hallow's a little town <laughs> that we set up. I'm just like looking at like all the people around. No, they're, the, kind of the like we they're strange weaponry. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm wondering so, yeah, why like, they're so blunt. Well, most of them have just got like spears and pitchforks and stuff. But yeah, one guy is carrying this long wooden club with a metal tube in it, and you can see that on his pouch he's kind of got like these little metal canisters, kind of on a belt, uh, long thin canisters with a tip to the metal point. And you can see uh, Macklin, the sheriff. He's got this. It almost looks like Trell's hand crossbow, but instead of having arms of a crossbow, it's got a long cylindrical tube with a, a metal pipe coming out of the end, basically, and it's on a little holster on his belt. Um, How would you ever stab anybody with those things? Oh, you're talking about the fire, the fire hand. What? Uh, it's got. It's a little device out here. You see, as you, and this is as you're walking. He's like, you see, out here in the troubled lands, there's a lot of resources. Most people didn't farm them or mine them because, well. Nobody had a reason to leave the Republic before. When we settled out, there's plenty of steel, uh, plenty of iron and copper, gold, silver. We found something else, uh, something called black powder. Nobody really knows who founded it because it kind of got distributed everywhere. But a man named Frederick Heckler discovered that he could make these weapons from it. We call them fire hands. And he brings it out, spins it around. See, what it does is it causes a small explosion, propels a piece of metal flying out. What? Faster than a crossbow bolt, faster than an arrow ever you saw. What? Let me show you. And he turns around and he's like, <coughs> Jim Bob, throw your moonshine up in the air. And he's like, all right, all right, Sheriff. And he throws it up and then the master just quickly and clicks the heel and a bullet flies out and breaks this thing. I didn't even see Loud it. Loud rocks out. Where was the metal um, thing? My kind of people. Taps it on the gun and he's like, straight out of the fire hand. That's so fast. Chink. Now they're so not very loud. Unfortunately, they're not very reliable either. I've known a few men that have had their hands blown off by them, or they tend to get jammed and all sorts yeah, of they look nonsense. Dangerous. But out here, explosion. It's pretty handy to have. Can drop a man in a single punch. Or not handy if you happen to lose your hand. I like this fella. He's got a good <laughs> sense of it. Got a good <laughs> sense of it. So after a few hours, you guys make your way, and what you see, Hallow Tent, is a small settlement. Um, it's nestled in a hilly area, covered by small patches of pine trees. The town itself is little more than an L-shaped row of houses, stores, and workshops, all built from pine wood. Campfires and stoves pump smoke into the air, and you can see figures in thick coats and furs move about the place in a busy but unconconcerned manner. Effectively imagine typical <coughs> Wild West town, kind of like saloon on the corner and then two rows of like stores and shops on either side and people making their way around. Um, the sheriff's like, well, we don't have much places for y'all to stay. Saloon's got a few beds, I reckon. It's sort of like a tavern or inn. Uh, you can stay there for the night. I'll make sure that it's paid for. Uh, I don't think the dark's around for you to investigate the creatures, uh, the bodies, sorry. Uh, investigate the bodies, but I can show you them in the morning. Uh, just try and stay out of trouble. People around here, they're a bit of a rough sort. Uh, How many have these explosive hands? Is it, oh, the fire hands. Yeah. They're very expensive. A lot of people can't afford them. Most people still have crossbows and swords and spears and that sort of like. But if you've got the money, you can go see an armsmith, have him make you one, or maybe even make you a bigger one, like old Tim Bob over here. And Tim Bob's the one with the long rifle, basically. He's like, I can shoot a deer from 500 feet away. <laughs> He's like, sure you can, Tim Bob. <laughs> Tim Bob. Ah, uh, Sheriff, I do want to just, could you maybe let <coughs> your men know if they do see a beast that happens to be purple and, like, my hair color, just one fighting with you, it's probably me, so don't attack that one. All right, 
sure I'll, thing, yeah, ma'am. It will become clear, but if... I'm it, sure it will. I just don't want to be on the wrong side of those, yeah. those weapons. No. But Probably I'm, I'm on your it. side. The, the big purple bear is fine. All right. Well, okay. um, our people ain't used to people turning into bears, so... Yeah, but it, it might, might, help us, might help us get an angle. Well, anyway, and he um, gestures up, and you can see outside this kind of, like, corner in, uh, there's a sign that says, The Swindler's Saddle. And there's a, a pair of swinging gates uh, that you can enter. He's like, I'll go speak to the owner, but uh, make sure that everything's all right. Is it cold here? Oh, it's freezing. It's absolutely freezing cold. Unlike the winter so spy, like you a... don't have magic to warm you, so you are freezing so cold. It's a wintry wild west. It's a wintry wild west. Very cool. I kick open these doors. You like, kick them open and straddle in, and you can see that the bar's kind of somewhat empty. Um, there's a few drinkers at one far end of the bar, and there's a man kind of cleaning a few mugs. And then you just hear this, <laughs> and you look over, and there are four dwarves wearing sooty, black stained kind of clothing. Uh, two of them have got these kind of like Stetson star hats. <laughs> One of them's just got like a short, scraggly, like ponytail and big, thick beards. But the beards are like covered in this black soot, and they're rolling dice and throwing money around and like spitting on the floor and just basically being in trouble. And uh, you can see Macklin just kind of eyes them and whispers to you guys, like. <clears throat> Stay clear of them four. They're part of the, the powder beards gang around here. <laughs> They've got a hat. They'll be taking a man's hat. I can assure you, sir. Well, so who's making all these hats? Hat maker. Well, where's that? Probably one down in the general store if you want to buy one. Keeps the snow off. And he like gestures and he like dusts the snow off of his. Does keep the snow off. I do want to visit that. Well, anyway, just make sure you don't mess Likewise. around with the powder beards. They're dangerous. The powder beards. He gestures to the four dwarves in the corner. Dangerous folks, probably carrying a fire hand on. I don't want to get hit by one of those. No. He goes over and speaks to the bartender, comes back, hands you two keys. Only two rooms, but you have to share. Cool. Catch, catch. Um, I'll see you in the morning. Stay out of trouble, y'all. And he goes to turns and heads his way out. Bye. My kind of people. Yeah. This place is weird. <laughs> Very strange. It's very cold. Very cold. Yeah, even inside, it's still really cold. There is a fire, but unlike you, don't have the magic to kind of protect you. The magic of the spies protect you from here. So. What kind of time is it right? Is it dark? Oh, it's very late. It's like evening time. Should we just like ten, eleven? We should probably get some rest. Just conk out. Probably. Well, look what we got here. And this dwarf like looks around. Couple of strays coming in from the cold. Huh? You ever? You paid your fee? What fee? Well, stranger fee. You got a pit. But no, a town. No, no, we don't. No, I've dealt with things like this before on my travels. You're not, you're not swindling. The dwarf me. suddenly, like the chair, like knocks back, and he like stands up and he walks up to you. I he only my, comes up to about your chest. Get my dagger. The dagger? You've been around, heavy boy. I've been around. Oh really? Not this far. And but just, I've been around. Shh. He pulls out a big, long, serrated knife. Pretty little poker you got there. Yeah. Mine's bigger. Yeah. Mine you've is got a bigger biggest. Head. <laughs> and I just get my guandao out and just put it in front of Cam, trying to kind of like put some distance between. At this point, the other three dwarves will like step up, and then you just hear like, "You ain't never seen one like this, though, demon." <laughs> and he pulls out what appears to be like a long crossbow-shaped kind of like two-handed device, but it's just ended in like a large funnel-shaped. Tube. It's like I'll blast you both to the abyss and gone before you know it. So why don't you just step off and pay the man his gold? I'm gonna invoke duplicity and a second cam's gonna appear behind him with a fake dagger. And he just turns around, like distracted by this second cam suddenly appearing. You don't wanna do that. He like looks at his like, eh? We've There's got a bit of a standoff. Powers you wouldn't believe. And Bet. as he says that, I'm going to use Thaumaturgy to kind of just make my eyes glow red. Okay. Fiery. So I'm going to druidcraft a breeze behind her as she does it to make her look even more intimidating. <laughs> like she starts like, <laughs> like the wind blows. starts like. Yeah. Just so I start looking a bit demonic. And so you're probably going to have a higher intimidate. You can intimidate with advantage because like <laughs> Juto is helping you basically, making you seem imposing. 21. They kind of step back, faltering a bit like, I don't know. Work. We better. Have you ever had a stranger approaching fee? 
Maybe you should be paying us just to be in our presence. Well, may maybe we should call it even. No stranger I don't know. Me. Sounds like you're heavy with gold. Maybe you should give some up. At this point, the bartender's like, Please, sir, <laughs> you don't want no trouble here. There won't be any trouble. They won't be alive to even make any. You back off. If you ain't careful, Dahlgrim's gonna be here tomorrow, and you don't wanna mess with Dahlgrim. He ain't gonna be afraid of the likes of you, and there'll be more of us. So you just step off, sir. You step off! How about I wave this fee and my other self won't slit his throat? Sounds good. Alright. 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 <laughs> <laughs> they, like, turn around slowly, <laughs> pull their chairs, like, glaring, go back to their game, drink, like, a whiskey. When they're gone, I'm gonna go... Okay, Ben, now no, we need to just go, just go. I'm very go. tired of all of Just go. <laughs> okay, so you guys are going to go rest? Yeah. Yes. Going to go upstairs. Okay. Uh, you go to settle in for the night. Unlike the winter spire, you don't have the protection of like the walls here, so you just hear this howling, wintry wind. Damn. You're pretty sure you hear wolves in the night, just the howling of them. It kind of sets you a little bit on edge. But you do eventually manage to get some sleep. I'm going to block up the door. <laughs> You're like just like planting like loads of stuff in front of it. Uh, it's rickety. It doesn't feel particularly uh, kindly. I am so happy to be here. Whose rooms? Because there's two rooms. And I want to know who's in whose room. Girls and boys, I guess. Girls okay, so the two of you I need you two to give me perception checks. We don't have a wall. Wait, what? To the Who? outside. Oh, okay. Okay. The boys. They might get a nighttime visitor. Uh, five. Twenty. Five. Twenty-one. Trell sleeps soundly. Cam, you kind of awake, and you can hear heavy footsteps outside your door, and you can Back see on. the knob like. <laughs> <laughs> I start waking up Trell. Oh, what the man. fuck is it? <clears throat> Back power here. What? Look, I fucked up, okay? And they're coming. They're coming for us. So the doors. We can take them. Blast the door if you need to. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm gonna sneak behind the door. The door knob stops. Okay. Also, be quiet. Okay. I'm just gonna wait there, see if there's any other noise, like footsteps leak going away, or any breathing. Give me a perception check. Uh, mm. Twenty. You can hear breathing. Two people on the other side of the door, but they're waiting. I'm just doing. I am going to use my mask to see through the door. Okay. Someone <laughs> <laughs> remember yeah, he had a mask. <laughs> And then you spend a charge, and the x-ray vision, the wooden wall, suddenly becomes transparent. <coughs> and you can now see two of the dwarves that were giving you hassle earlier. Um, one of them's got a knife, and you can see him basically crouched by the door. And the other one, um, you can see him basically starting to pull out... It kind of looks like a cylindrical device with like two kind of screw tops and a long piece of string almost and he's like he's like planting it down on the ground and the other one's like Shh. i'm gonna eldritch blast the door you just, <laughs> um you blast the door it comes off its hinges knocking the one who's just about to like use some sort of tinder on the device it blasts him across over a railing into the center four of the saloon the other one is like uh, give me initiative rolls for you two guys. I'm just there with Shall the we wake up? up? <laughs> yeah, at this point, you hear... <coughs> <coughs> the familiar sound of trial blasting. I stood there with a dagger, it's just a blast that goes past. <laughs> Do we roll fuck? initiative as well? Uh, you guys will, yeah. So. Natural 20, for fuck's sake. Oh, wow. Nice. Now I get one. You go the night before. I got six. <laughs> <laughs> So you roll high, I roll low. Uh, I didn't roll that for their initiative. Oh high. shit, guys. Well, you are not very good at initiative. Cam, initiative. 14. Laura. 23. Tromar. Uh, 22. Juto. 6. Okay. So, in Laura, technically, your round is you wake up and you're like gathering your things because you know you're not, you don't sleep in armor and stuff like that. You're just gathering your stuff quickly. Um, so your first, you and Juto basically don't get your first turn because you're caught surprised. Trelamar, you blast the door off and you can hear a groaning. Whoever you knocked over the banister is obviously still alive. Mm. Um, and then you just basically see this other dwarf with like this long serrated knife like looking around like... Argh. How close is he to me? Right, like he's round on the other side of the wall because you blasted the door open. He's on the other side of the door next to uh, where the door opening is but on the other side of the wall. So he's like, you know, within easy blasting range if you wanted to. Yeah. Okay, give me a blast. 
Why not? Why not? Twenty-three, twenty-four. Yeah, that hits. Yeah. Is that both beams? <laughs> no, that's just one beam. <laughs> okay, give me the second beam. Twenty. Twenty. Both beams hit. Yes. Uh, uh, he seems to be wearing sort of like a rawhide, sort of like leather armor. Um, and you can see he's basically got what appears to be like a long knife and then a small kind of hatchet in one hand. Uh, Fourteen for the first blast. Yes, you have. And <coughs> then nine for the other one. Okay. Okay. You doesn't kill him, but you blast him. Um, his armor starts smoking as he's like staggering back, clearly winded. <gasps> Like, as he stumbles back, uh, you know, very clearly knocked off balance, surprised by what you've been doing um, as he stumbles back. Do you want to do anything else? Like, move anywhere? Or you just, like, the, there is a gaping hole in, like, the wooden wall where you've kind of, like, blasted through it and the door's now <laughs> off its hinges, smoking. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll step through the gap. You just step through and look at this guy who's, like, <laughs> like stumbling all over the place. Cam Buckland? I'm just stood there with a dagger. <laughs> <laughs> shake it off. I walk out. Okay saying to the black powder, I was trying to get some nice sleep, <laughs> and you shitheads cause us to blast this door open. You don't understand how agitated I get when I don't get my sleep, right? Uh, he's like still reeling from Trell's blast as this all happens I'm in just six seconds. I'm just to him like, he's like splurging. <laughs> yeah. I just get a dagger and I'll just stab. Okay. <laughs> Straight up stab. So angry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 15. That hits, yeah, just slides it to like... That would be embarrassing if it didn't. <laughs> Seven points of damage. <laughs> just into his chest. <laughs> just falls down dead. Right, where's the other one? <laughs> you hear a groaning come from like the floor below. Um, <coughs> as it is there go as well. Juto, you're basically still getting your stuff ready as well. So if it's a little worried, like you missed the first turn, she was woken up. Um, but basically like you hear this kind of like... Uh, boys, they're awake. Get them! And then, like, just like he staggers to his feet, and you basically hear him pull out what sounds like you know two sort of weapons from his belt, um, and then he kind of trotters over towards the stairwell. Uh, looking over, the two of you now spot sort of on the stairs leading up to the upper floor of this kind of saloon. You can see these two figures, one of whom has got this kind of large device um, aimed down the corridor, like maybe about ten feet away from you, and just. Uh, as it fires out to both of you. That's going to be only 12 to hit you, oh. uh, and only 8 to hit you. You both dive for cover back into the room as this sends shrapnel down the entire sort of like upper balcony and just shed shredding the wood all around you as you dive into cover. Um, and then you just basically hear another one just go like, I got him! And then you just hear, um, okay, I need you both to make dexterity saving throws, please. Oh, nice. 22. 16. 16. You both <coughs> watch as this little cylinder <coughs> canister kind of like, ding, 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 with this fuse. I'm gonna kick it what do you out. want to do? You're going to kick it away? Mm -hmm. So you kick it away and it <laughs> lands back It lands back in the main area of the, the saloon. <laughs> And this explosion erupts. Um, it, it's not like, it's not as much fire as it is bludgeoning force, as it's just. Uh, you hear one of actually he would technically now have to make a saving throw. Uh, he does avoid some damage. The one that you knock down is hit by the blast. <laughs> Fuck! I rolled a shit ton of damage though. That kills him. You basically, <laughs> hear, you basically hear. <laughs> um, we got to get us some of this shit. Uh, as oh he God. collapses to the ground. Uh, Elora, like, you now basically come out your room. What? You see two dwarves on the landing of this thing, one with this device pointed down the corridor. You can hear the cries of agony. Oh my God. Um, so the one downstairs what are they? is now dead. He's dead. Okay. What are they wearing? Uh, like hide leather armor, so like, like raw leather. Not good enough, no. Uh, he can't hear. Well, you can hear now the gun in his hands. He's holding like a shotgun, basically. Which is metal. It's got like metal tubing and metal trigger and metal parts. Technically, on it. it's a firearm yeah, it's for a, fire. a heckler. It's not a shotgun. If uh, well, I, no. um, in the theater uh, of emergency. Sorry, the fire hand is the, the handgun, not the shotgun. You don't know what that's called yet. If I Boomstick. poke my head out of the room and see them, yeah. can I catch them both in a moonbeam? Yeah. 
They're right. They're literally on top of each other. You should have listened to them. Like they're looking at it like, what's that light? There's no window up there, and they're like looking around. Not I'll just, sure I'll just, do. I'll just smile at them and okay. then duck back inside the room. Okay. Uh, uh, bar. So who's around? There's two of them at the end of like a hallway on the upper balcony of this saloon, just with this gun pointed down the corridor towards you. Just turn blast on again. You just turn out. <laughs> Almost like a Wild West shootout. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm doing my fingers. Like <laughs> pew, 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 pew. Nice. Oh, shit. Uh, 15. Uh, that hits, yeah. Okay. Still. And the other one. Is this one each or both one, on one? One each. Okay. Uh, 11. Uh, that does not hit, unfortunately. Bastards. Bastards. <laughs> but the one that did hit. 11. Uh, so that's 11 damage, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he kind of like straight, oh, like staggers back. The other one just blasts into the wall behind him. Uh, Cam Buckland. Gonna step out mm -hmm. and just throw Nimbus at his face. Yeah. Okay. Nimbus flies out your hand. Yeah. Okay. Committed. 14. That hits. Nimbus flies through. Seven again. Seven. Is that the one that Troll injured? Would you go for the same one that he injured? Okay. Uh, again, I just follow the path. He kind of like smoke. cuts into his shoulder. <laughs> like he's like grasping at it, but he's not down. He's like, ah! What's the name of that thing? Uh, you're deaf. Okay. <laughs> not catchy. Um, okay. On there you go. The one with the shotgun blast will try and shoot you and you again. Uh, that is a. This time it's a thirteen. That's still going to be a miss. And that's, oh man, I can't roll for shit today. 14 against Cam. Again, like, this this time the shrapnel kind of just bounces off. What armor? You kind of bring your cloak up for protection as it deflects away the shrapnel, um, <laughs> unable to hit. The <laughs> other one, the one who threw the, the dynamite effectively, he pulls out two axes and just, he's like, ah, and charges towards you. Uh, charges at Tramar. Uh, 10 to hit you. And then with, this, uh, with the second axe, that's a 20 to hit you. Yeah, okay. So this uh, second axe cuts into you for eight points of damage. <laughs> as it thuds into your thigh, just a deep cut. <laughs> that's it, boy. I'm going to cut you up. I'm going to make you bleed. Wow. <laughs> Jesus. Um, nice people. Yeah. It's very civilized. Is it their your turn? Moonbeam. Yeah, there's only one still in the moonbeam, sadly. One charged out of it. But it, even if he was in it at some Oh, okay. Point, was it at the beginning of their turn? It's that the it beginning of oh, their sorry. turn that it goes off. All so. right. Well, I'll make dexterity checks for both of them. Uh, so one gets a dex of 17, Damn and then the other one gets a dex of 5. Well, one fails. Okay. It takes half damage. Oh my god, I just rolled two. Two. And the other takes one. Two fucking damage. Oh, Are you yeah. kidding me? Golf claps all around. It's like, eh, what's I this hate... line? It burns! <laughs> can I... Is there a way I can move it to get the other one back in? No, no? okay. I'll keep on one of them. Though, okay. So. And what would you like to say short term? Uh, kind of people. <laughs> mm. Sorry, it should have been your go. I forgot that you're sick. You're on the last I'm still here. Yeah, sorry. Hey. So still I can't here. You can go after Laura. Can't do anything. While Laura's thing. looking at her spells, you can go. What do you want to do? Who dares disturb my slumber? Uh, uh, pain train. I'm going to come out the one who came at Trell. Okay, yeah, you literally open your door and he's in front of you fighting Trell. Is he right in front of the door? Yeah. Like right by you. What were you doing? Right by me. Technically, it's, it's due to go first. Oh, your he, moonbeam he went got off. me. Yeah, I got Oh, moonbeam. Yeah, the moonbeam now is due to go. Uh, I'm going to... Gwandao or Punchies? Yeah, Gwandao. Gwandao, okay. Bring Gwandao down. Gwandao. Uh, 13, 20. That hits. Gwandao slices in. Four, nine, plus, so uh, five, Is that 14, poison? yeah. Uh, poison, <coughs> half, whatever you rolled on the dice, they are dwarves, five. so it's two later. Two, okay, so nine, ten, eleven. Eleven points. Uh, that's enough to kill the one that is attacking Trell. You ram the grand out through him, ah, as he like stumbles Wilhelm screaming, ah, off the balcony. Um, the other one is round the corner, you can run up to him quite easily though. Can I water with him? Uh, you, a war twit is an action and you've already used your action oh, to attack. But you can move and spend your other, other attack. I'll, um... Actually, he's not... He's done his turn, hasn't he? Yeah. I'm just going to stay where I am. Okay, you just stand. I don't want to block the corridor from all the other people. Okay. Illora. Boys! Is Moonbeam still on the one that's alive? Yes. Cool. 
Oh. Mm. Okay, I'm just gonna shoot him. <laughs> just pull out the bow. <laughs> Go for it. Oh, I couldn't. Shoot him. Do it. You could have moved up to him in a second as well. 19? That hits. Dude, there's four of us. You hit something with your bow, Katie! <laughs> this is the first time! No, I have before. Have you? Yeah. Oh. Episode uh, one. Four, da- four damage. <laughs> four points of damage. Ugh. I'm gonna put these dice in the bin and use that. This is the one with the uh, the big shotgun that's firing a minute. Trellamar. Boomstick. Who's around? Just this one who's like. <laughs> it looks like he's about to run, run away. Let's blast him. Okay. I'd like to use my movement to go back to bed. Uh, but that's that's 19 without my yeah, yeah, bonus, that so hits, that, yeah. that hits that, him. That hits him. Second um, beam. Oh, that one doesn't. Okay, my well, first one. Uh, Damage. Eight. Eight points. Uh, the blast catches him, oh, staggering him back. Not quite killing him. Um, do you want to do anything else? He's just standing there, just firing from behind you two. Looking cool. Um, Cam Brockland. Um, I'm going to speak to that guy and say, do you really want to die right now? No! Then drop that, please. Uh, he just drops it. Cool, I'm gonna go to grab him by the neck. Yeah. Nope, you grabbed him by the neck. It's like, oh, it's bright now. It's <laughs> 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 like, what, why did you do this? Hey, we're gonna kill you in your sleep, but I don't wanna do that no more. No, because we're awake <laughs> we're for one. Gonna <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pull him out of the, the moonbeam. Okay, just drag him out. I was like, you're gonna tell us all about your little gang. And... Dog Grim is gonna kill you when he finds out you killed his men. Nothing I can do can stop him. <laughs> <laughs> Who is he? Who is he? This, oh. this dwarf stinks, by the way. His breath is so bad. <laughs> uh, someone drove craft his breath away. He's something. the leader of the Paddlebeards. <sighs> Got I'm his gonna... eyes set on this town. Look, I'm talking to you, but I'm gonna look this way. <laughs> God, he's disgusting. Can I use my yeah. elemental attunement to, to like, like bro, bro, blow his air away? Yeah, yeah. you can. I'll put a smell of. Are we out of Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you guys are out of this too. Does anyone want to rough this guy up a little bit? He stinks real bad. No, he can't hold him much longer. You've seen what we're capable of. I'm not going to fight no more. I promise. You're going to go back to this dark room fella. What does What's he want with this? Now, if I go back, he'll kill me. No, you go back and you say. No, you gonna kill me. No, shut, shut up. He'll kill me. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna go back and you say mission complete. They put up a fight, but they're all dead now. All right. Then all right, I'll do you'll that. You'll be rewarded, right? Yeah. Good. Can I take your ear? It's proof. <laughs> no, you can't take my ear. <laughs> I need proof. I'll go up to one of the other dwarfs and cut their ear off. Oh, well, he might not, but okay. I, I dust off the soot. <laughs> there you go. Okay. I'm, you're not gonna have my ear, what a question! At this point, the fucking door to the saloon kicks in and the Sheriff Macklin comes in with his gun, he's blearily looking around, he's like, What in tarnation? What is going on? Like We've handled around. the situation, thanks to your prompt response team. You four? Well, I told you to stay out of trouble. What? They we tried, tried to kill us in our sleep. Mm. And he look, looks down at all the dead dwarves, <laughs> he's like, Well, that wasn't very smart of them, was it? Ugh. You got one alive? We got this one. What are you doing with him? He's gone here. <laughs> All right. You want me to lock him He's up? Done it. We were telling you, you got this dark grim problem, right? Dolgrim. 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 Who? Dolgrim. Don't know him. Leader of his gang. Leader of this gang. They keep. Leader from... of the powder bands. Yeah. Bam. Yeah. Do you so... want to keep him for questioning? Yep. Yep. <laughs> well, I suggested. That'd be nice. Sheriff? We're you not win? quiet. Okay. We're not quiet. Okay. Are we talking over a blasted balcony? Yeah, like, like, the balconies are like shattered where like things got kicked off. There's a door currently on the floor. Uh, all the tables and chairs have pretty much been <coughs> destroyed and like blown apart. Um, as you look down, you can see an absolutely shocked and terrified innkeep, like just looking at his bar, like, uh, like the sheriff is blearily like looking around, waving his gun, just like, mm, I can take him back to lock him up. Well, I question him. Question, Sheriff. Yep. Do we get a reward? Nope. Wanted dead or alive? Uh, they hadn't committed a crime yet, so I couldn't post a bounty on him. Shall I just read his mind and we can just kill him? Uh, yeah, we could. Sorry, go. what? <laughs> the thing is, my fear is this Dolgrim guy is going to come after us, right? I'm sure he'll come after us anyway. Yeah, but not if we get this guy to go back and say that we're dead. Yeah, but... 
look at the state of this guy. He's not going to believe that he was the, anymore, he was honest. the only one who survived. You can have him. I push him off the balcony. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to die. Uh, excuse me. Oh. <laughs> that was the dwarf. That was me role playing the dwarf. Immersive. Uh, he'd only take a little bit of damage. Uh, you can have him. He like lands. You hear his leg <laughs> snap. The <laughs> ah! ship's like, well, makes him easier. And then like literally grabs him by the scruff of the neck and starts dragging him. The dwarf is howling in pain. He's like, I'll lock him up. Are there any steps? Please try not to blow up any more buildings. Hey, that wasn't us. They're doing that. Are there any stray Stetsons lying around? The dwarves weren't wearing them, no. Aww. Aww. Motherfuckers. Did any of them have cool firearms? Guns? Yeah, firearms. Uh, there's the shotgun, which is laying on the ground. Dibs. Jutu uh, just Lord. walks up to it, picks it up. Do they have anything else on them? Uh, so the one who's currently being dragged away, you can see that he has like one of these belts, and you can see these large Ooh, cartridges. Uh, yeah, it's basically like powder char, like bullets. Basically, he's carrying, and um, he's got a belt of one of those. There is also the unexploded cylinder that they were setting outside of your door that they look like they were going to try and roll under. That's still there, is it? That's still there. Yoink. So Cam picks that up, and I want to write that down. Do you, do you want that? Explosive charge. Okay. Be careful with that, Cam. What? Don't, don't blow your balls well, off. this thing. <laughs> <laughs> this Throws thing. it in the bag. Um, can I, like, I presume the charges are for the shot boomstick. Yes. Yeah. Boomstick. It's the guy that was carrying it, yeah. I'll get it all up. Okay, he, like, um, he takes the belt off and throws it to you. They have anything else on them? Any gold? Any? Uh, yeah, the dead ones do have some gold on them, actually. Uh, they have. You are a resident banker. Yeah. Take that. Uh, <laughs> they each have 17 gold, there's three <coughs> dead, so that's 30, 44, 51 gold. How many charges are there? Uh, there is in total eight shots. Damn. Mm -hmm. I'll, right. give you the, I'll give you the stats for that for next week. Do I have to get proficient in it? Or? You, oh. Yeah, I'm for, you cannot find that and be considered can proficient. proficient. Can you, you can got an practice, but it will take a long time. Can I have a bonding session with the sheriff to teach them how to shoot? Maybe. With his but it, in arms. one day, it's probably not going to teach <laughs> you how to shoot it accurately. I just want Idris Elba to shoot. To teach well, how to shoot. I'm sure you do. You can have like a, a quick session, a quick training session, but it's not going to be enough to gain proficiency in it. Not yet. You're going to need to keep practicing. Okay, so uh, you guys eventually do get back to sleep. Uh, the, the sheriff does have to kind of talk the barkeeper we... into like not throwing you out with <laughs> the gold. They attacked us! Yeah, and that's what the sheriff is basically saying. Like, you know, the town will apparently cover it. There does seem to be like, they don't even seem to worry too much about gold here. Like, like the guys, you know, you hear the kind of barkeep saying, oh, it's going to cost 200, 300 gold to get covered. And the sheriff's like, there's no, fine, there's no problem, we can cover that and stuff like that. So. It definitely seems to be a very wealthy town. Prosperous. Mm. Do um, we then get a full rest? You get a long rest. Yes. A long rest. A long rest. In the morning, <coughs> you are awoken. Uh, you are not given a breakfast by the innkeeper, who does not like you very much. <laughs> um, you instead, you have like trail you. rations. He doesn't really get a choice. <laughs> uh, you have trail rations and things, and you fetch fresh water and stuff like that. And eventually, uh, Macklin, the sheriff, comes around and is like, Well, good morning. I hope last night's uh, activities didn't put you off in a little adventure here. And Leastry comes out of a room. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <You've got laughs> the yeah. And he just is like, Oh, good morning. And then he looks around and he's like, What happened here? How did you not wake up? <laughs> oh, I, I, was, um, I use a special meditative trance <coughs> to learn my spells. It means I'm completely out. I, I don't pick up on anything that happens. That's wow. very dangerous. Stupid. Well, yeah. it's not like you would have been much use even if you had been around. So. He looks really sad. Right? <laughs> wow! No, you're, you're probably Jeez. right, Telemar. No, you, I've not exactly proven I'm just going to step on Charles' <laughs> foot, like, really purposefully. <laughs> no, you're probably right, though, Charles. Yeah. And Cam's. <laughs> <laughs> Right. She's only got little feet. Like, feet like. Sorry, no, I, I, yes, I, I grab by the shoulder. It's like time to prove yourself, eh? Yeah, uh, yes. Now the real work mm. happens. So yeah, uh, leave so us. It's like yes. Well, shall I take you to? I can take you to the mortician's office. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The what? Mortician, a uh, doctor, kind of thing. Deals with dead folks. Why did you have to deal with them? You know, put them to rest, all that business. Find out how they died. And grave digger. Well, sort of. Kind of mixed with a doctor too. She heals us when we're sick, as well. But yes, we would like to. <laughs> All right, let's make our way. And then uh, 
He basically starts leading you out. You go down the, the main strip and you can see that it's quite busy and bustling. Um, you pass by a general store which kind of has just like a bunch of like mining supplies in the windows, uh, different like fur, like winter clothing, a couple of hats, that sort of thing um, as you're making your way down. Um, you also pass by a store which has Armsmith written on it. And you can see in the window there are not actual physical ones, but displays that show the fire hand and the boomsticks that you saw, like the dwarves and the, and the sheriff carrying. Oh, like and a you can child see them. in a Christmas store. Uh, you're just walking past it currently. You go up to the window. Yeah. It's all like displays. There's no actual physical things. You do see some of the bullets though, kind of like scattered on sort of like little display stands. Look at all these fire hats. We've got to get us some more. And then you carry on. <laughs> and uh, you are taken uh, to a kind of like a, a small kind of office almost, like a little building. Um, and you make your way, and he's like, Sheriff turns around, he's like, Now I should warn you, uh, Whisperfoot's a bit of a strange one, a gnome, so she's a bit odd. But, uh, she'll show you the vibes. It's kind of racist. What? It's kind of racist. What? You said she's kind of weird because she's a gnome. That kind of weird. What? <laughs> he steps inside, <laughs> uh, and as you go inside, you are immediately confronted. This office. Is full of cuckoo clocks. Like there are cuckoo clocks on every fucking wall, every surface, every part of the wall is covered by a cuckoo. Is it clock. Like cook. Uh, yeah, kind of like just clocks fucking everywhere. Um, and you can see that there is a desk, and sitting on it, tinkering with like these big lenses, um, there is a small, uh, quite young, about like 22-ish, like if in sort of comparative human years, uh, bright orange hair, uh, big pair of spectacles. This little gnome lady, and she's just like. Oh, good morning, Sheriff. Hello. How can I help? Hi. <laughs> Hello. Hello, um, Doctor. Morti mortician. Yes, Doctor Salandra Whisperfoot. How can I help? Are you sick? Got a bit of a problem in the men's department? No. <laughs> that happens a lot around here. It's fine. I can I've never talk had to me. that problem. He, sure? does. he does. Bit of a problem down there. I don't know how to treat dark elves. Never really met one. Do you have some sort of fungus down there or something? Oh. There's nothing wrong with that area, I can assure you, madam. All right, well, <coughs> I'm just saying a lot of men don't like to talk about it, but you should, if there's a problem, get it checked. Get it checked. I think this one needs his prostate checked. I can do that. Would you like? What's a prostate? Yeah, just come round, take, drop the trousers, bend over, it's all fine. It'll be over very quickly. All right. It's a nice cam, you'll like it. <laughs> you do? Yeah. Okay, she gives you a prostate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no, my god. It's all good. <laughs> all fine. All fine. I don't know why you thought he had a problem. I'm just in shock for the rest of it. The sheriff's just like, it takes his hat off, it, hangs he, it up. He had a very unusual gait. So he, you know, when he, oh, when he was walking, I, 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 you know, could I just... Be, does he eat a lot of cheese? Oh, uh, he's grapes. grapes. Oh, it could be gout. Ah. Uh, what up there? <laughs> What? Up there? No! I don't put grace up In there. your foot! Oh. Yeah. Why did you check my prostate then? He said you needed it. What? <laughs> How can I help? And at least he's like, um, yes, I'm so sorry. <laughs> There's something about some mutilated bodies that we should see. <coughs> uh, he's like, uh, uh, Lady Laura, uh, can we get out of this madness? Hi, ma'am. Yes. And she's like, oh, the bodies, of course. Come with me. They're down in the chiller. Uh, and she oh, okay. takes you downstairs into like an old stone <coughs> cellar, basically. Uh, you can see there's like these big blocks of ice that have been carved out to keep the room cool. And you can see that there are four bodies kind of laid out on these long stone tables. Each one of them has been horrifically mutilated. Uh, both of, a couple of them have lost limbs, like arms literally torn out of their sockets. Most of them have big bite marks that almost encompass like upper parts of their body, throats ripped out. Yes, poor souls found them like this. Terrible business. Yeah. Did you wash your hands? Of course, I'm a professional. Good. Uh, I'm gonna look at them. Can I see what kind of an animal bite it was? Yeah, give me a nature check with advantage. I could do it for, I'm gonna do something for the history as well. Fifteen. Fifteen, okay. Uh, you look over them. Um, the creature that would have done this would have been much larger than a wolf, uh, than a usual wolf. Now, you've encountered things like dire wolves. That would be more like this kind of size. Um, the claw marks. The one thing you notice is that these bodies haven't been fed on. Now, normally a natural beast like a wolf or a dire wolf or something like that would obviously kill to eat. It's hunting. It's for food. These have just been killed. There's, there's no sign of them actually being et. Uh, and the least tree kind of examines it. Uh, Laura, look at this. Um, around the bite marks, there's traces of... This looks like frostburn. 
if you used magic to free something, uh, especially things natural, fruits or, or flesh, it causes this type of burn. I've seen this before. Where have you seen it? Have you seen it? I just enjoy, anything that is is a flash frozen or a, experiences intense cold, uh, especially flesh, it will, it will react like this. Do you think the teeth of whatever killed them? I could be, but I, I mean, the only creature I can think of. A dragon, a coal, a white dragon, are known to breathe cold. What? Perhaps if they, please. I'm out. Please please no, please I'm out. No. We all return to Talisvar. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but that's the only creature I, I can think of, really. Nothing good, then. I don't know. I, I've not really seen anything like this. Uh, the three of you, though, uh, <coughs> while you're examining it, um, can you give me perception checks? Twelve. Nineteen. Six. Okay, due to you notice, looking at these bodies, whilst there is a lot of damage from, obviously, you know, claws and teeth that have seemed to pull these bodies apart, you notice that on two of them, there is deep, deep gashes all along one side. Now, it's been masked by claw marks, but this, these two bodies, something with incredible strength, attack them with a bladed weapon. Mm-hmm. I relay this to the team. Did you know that, Mortician? Uh, no, I hadn't spotted that before. I, I, I just wouldn't have thought a creature of such strength could, would have been able to do that. It looked like it was a natural part of the tearing. So something that can wield a blade, so it has arms and hands. Uh, I've never seen a dragon with a sword, unless it's a dragon born. Mm. The only thing I can think of, something incredibly strong, that has an affinity for cold, possibly a frost giant? Oh, God. That sounds unpleasant. It does sound unpleasant. Would I they, mean, like, would the they have the ability to freeze things? I don't know. I've never encountered one, but obviously I know that they have an affinity for frost and ice. Do I know anything about frost giants? You can give me a knowledge check, yeah. Natural yeah. 20. <laughs> Natural 20, Cam Buckland. <laughs> <laughs> you have a rare moment of... Uh, I was raised by frost giants. <laughs> <laughs> no, but as part of the Buckland family, you definitely heard a lot of stories and tales about giants. Yeah. Now, there's a lot you know about giants, actually. It's kind of one of your favourite stories when you're growing up. So the giants, there's lots of different types of giants. Fire giants, stone giants, hill giants, storm giants, and frost giants, and cloud giants. Um, the giants are, the order of them is created by something called the ordning. Uh, the ordning, which basically determines their social status. Now, frost giants are in the kind of middle range. They're not quite servants of the other giants, but they're also not the leaders. Uh, they are very much a... Frost giants are a warrior culture, very similar to Vikings in a way. They respect honour and glorious combat, but they are also natural raiders. They love to fight and pillage and take. Uh, they like to hoard gold and treasure. Um, they are very... Uh, they love to hunt. And to like find game, um, they also can create. They can create howling blizzards and create ice as well. Um, they aren't particularly good crafters though, and that tends to be what they steal a lot of. So things like made goods. Um, they're not known for having any ability to conjure ice though. They tend to be more like warriors. They fight with axe and. and do they have like crusty exteriors? They do. They're blue. They're tall. They're huge. 12, like, they can go to, like, 15 foot tall. Uh, they wield, you know, they've got bluish skin, thick beards of white, um, you know, they're, they're very physically impressive. But, yeah, no, no magical abilities from what you remember. I relay that to the group in the form of a children's tale. Okay, yeah, like a children's tale about the frost giants. I One interesting fact, told. with the natural 20, you do know that some frost giant Jarls, which is their type of leader, carry a magical war horn that can summon blizzards and can shoot ice from it. Okay, I'd relay that as well. <coughs> so maybe that's good information to go back to the groups with, see if they've heard the horn before. There's mm. been no sound of a horn. Tell you that. Well, if you hear one, you know that they're coming. Yeah. So that's a good that's warning, a good at least. Good warning, at least, yeah. These... What about these teeth, Mark? They... They it's might true. Be I mean, there's definitely an animal. With some animals. If they're hunters, yeah, they could, could be using them. pack animals, uh, wolves or something. It's some not such. small wolves. It will be big, dire wolf size. It would make sense if these are frost giants out there. What are mm. they doing? 
Are they just doing it for fun? These victims, where were they found? found? Were they all together? <clears throat> Some, most of them tend to be uh, woodsmen and uh, foragers out in the out in the forests and the pines out here. And were they all together, or no? Were they no, separate? these have been found over a few separate days, different times. Were their so, bodies looted? Uh, well, they didn't really carry much, but they they didn't find anything with them, just the bodies themselves. So things were definitely taken. Are they hunting hmm. people for game, or for purpose? I if they're say. taking things that are on the bodies, then all we've been able to find is tracks, wolf tracks, large but wolves nonetheless. Because they don't follow them back. Well, my scouts that I sent out, the only ones, the, the, they lost the tracks. It's really difficult out here in the snow. Snow drifts cover them really easily. But they did spot a lot of wolves around that elven spire that we all found you. And at least he looks up, he's like, my people don't have anything to do with wolves. Uh, we, we don't keep animals of that nature. A few birds, perhaps, owls, falcons, but no wolves. They could be scouting it out, perhaps, if they have some sort of unnatural connection to these giants. Perhaps. What if they're planning to attack? Mm. It could well be. In which case, we, we should to... head back. Yeah. Mm. We need to follow these tracks. We need to. The tracks will lead back to the spire, mm. which mm. we're going to go to anyway. Yeah. And we may as well warn the Lord that there could be an impending attack by frost giants and wolves. Yeah. Well, Elisha, is there any way that you can send word faster that we are on our way? <laughs> I must consult the tome of spells. Uh, no, he does generally start thinking. Um, can he cast this particular spell I'm thinking of? B -b 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 Wizards! <laughs> That's a ringtone. Oh, yeah. Text message. No. B -b -b um, no, I'm so sorry, Laura. I, I, I don't know a spell that can do that. I, I, I wish I'd learned something of that nature. Then let's. I mean, I could send Whisper, my owl. Yeah, <coughs> yeah. that's something. Is he, he will flies? He will be faster. Yes. Yeah. I can send him back. I can give them some warning. Let's not talk about it anymore. Let's do it. All right. And he gets, steps outside. He goes upstairs. One final who? Who? <laughs> ah, and he, he sends Whisper off. And we should follow him. Are we heading back to the spire, or do you wish to follow these tracks, as Lydia Laura said? I mean. Perhaps we could put a stop to it before it happens. Potentially, yes. I guess I, if the I, word I, is given to them. I, I, I don't want to go back to my father without some success. I, oh. I'm sorry to involve you in my selfish indulgences, but this well, is... Well, coming here and seeing the bodies and discovering what it could be, that is that's something that we didn't have before. Mm. It is, but it won't be enough for him, Laura, and I think you've seen enough of him to know that. I know, but let's see what we can do uh, to stop them in their tracks. If they intend to attack the Spire, if we I, need to cut them off before then. I, I will do as you wish. If you wish to head back now, I will come with you. I think we need to hold them off before they get there. All right. They All can't right. get as far as the Spire. Tutor? Mr. Sheriff. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. We recovered one of these firearms from the dwarves that attacked us last night. Ah, nasty piece of work. Uh, Blunderbuss. Can you show us how to use it? Uh, I can show you a few things, how to operate and such, but it takes a bit of training to get used to. I mean, I've grown up with these things all my life. I'm a pretty adept shooter, but it takes a while to learn. But I can show you the basics, if nothing else. It would be much appreciated. It'll take about an hour or so to show you the basics, but then you'll have to practice on your own. Also, keep in mind, it's not so easy to find ammunition for those things, especially once you get out of the troubled lands. Anything that we could use to our advantage. Of course, well, I'll help you as best as I can. If these... Giants are a threat to your spire, then likely they'll come after Hallow next. Probably. I'd very much like to not have that as a problem. We'll go see how many there are, and if we could lend any assistance to us. Most of the people here, it'll be difficult for them, but I'll come with you. I can lend a hand, lend my fire hand, spins it around. Yep. Do what I can. It would perhaps also help creating a good bond with yourselves and the elves of the spire. Sure, if they're willing to help. Uh, since seen that this fella's father, that lord there, was too busy. I mean, I can understand his position. Look after your own people first. Uh, it's certainly been the way of a lot of frontier towns out here, but he I think you're right that it would be better if we worked together. He suffered a great loss recently. He's not in the best of mind frames to be dealing with people that he doesn't know. So but that's... Coming up to his gate, accusing him of... 
killing cat. I admit it wasn't probably the best sort of start to a relationship, but we can work on it. Let's fix it. Very well. All right, let's go. Cool. As you guys make your way upstairs, you hear a thundering of hooves. Mm. Not quite hooves, legs. Seven giant boars, saddles atop them. Mm-hmm. Black bearded dwarves riding oh, into town. <laughs> each wearing a dark hat, and at their head, a particularly grizzled-looking dwarf with an eye patch and an iron chest plate. Any chance we can An hide. impossibly long fire hand at his belt. <laughs> yeah, you can hide if you want to. But so they're basically riding through to the town. It looks like they're going to pull up to the saloon, basically. Let's hide. Can we get out of town without them seeing Let's following try. tracks? We can. I can't come with you, though. I'm going to have to deal with these lot. That's probably that part of the game that he mentioned this dog room. Do the tracks, Do we? did we notice if the, the tracks led towards the frostbite? You haven't fire? looked yet. You haven't no. looked for the tracks yet. You don't know. You can fight giants. You, don't you can probably make your way down the alley. There's a couple of buildings down here. Make your way past an alley. They won't spot you. I'll go deal with them. You, I'll give you a distraction. I mean, like the sheriff kind of steps out. And uh, you can see these dwarves kind of lined the giant boars that are like stomping and snorting <coughs> up by the saloon and they hop down from their little saddles. Howdy there, gentlemen. What can I do for you here in Hallow? He call the sheriff calls out and this dwarf with the eye patch turns around. Well, if it ain't the sheriff of this here town. <laughs> I'll just stopping by, picking up a few supplies. Nothing to worry yourself about with law, man. <laughs> Well, I'm pleased to hear it. We don't like no trouble here in Hallow. He's just like, <laughs> ain't no trouble, Sheriff. Just a few lonely travelers on their way, making a bit of gold. <laughs> <laughs> don't you worry none. And, he, and he's just like, all right. And like the Sheriff just like leans up against the building, hand resting on his pistol at his side. Trout, can you uh, telepathy uh, the Sheriff? To yeah. be telling him to catch us up by following the tracks once you're done here. Uh, you, you do that. that. I do that. You yeah. can't respond, but yeah. You do that. <clears throat> and you guys are going to go after the tracks? Yeah, I'm going to cast Pass Without a Trace unless you want. Okay, everybody stealth check. With a plus 10 bonus from the Pass Without a Trace. Um, oh, natural I, one. Can I cast Invisibility on myself in the dust loop? You can. You cast invisibility. So do I need to still roll? Or? Well, you do for moving quietly, but you 30. basically you're not. Thirty-one. 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 Christ. And Laura disappears into I mist. I've never been seen. Trelawar's like, I'm going to sneak now. <laughs> <laughs> Boop, boop, boop. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Uh, uh, at least you got a twenty. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. It's, it's heavy-footed underneath it, me. It, it's all great, except you all kind of get round the corner. Juto's invisible. You all sneak round. At least Tree himself is even being quite quiet, and then. Trell trips into a barrel <laughs> that just <laughs> sink. Thanks, Trell. <laughs> Makes a loud crashing noise. All the dwarves look round. They don't see anybody else. They just see Trellamar. Well, what have we got here? A little dark elf. A bit far from the underground, aren't we, sir? <coughs> just on my travels. <laughs> uh, a bit of dangerous lands out here, fella. You better watch where you step. Never know who you might run into out here in the snow, I say. <laughs> I've I've seen worse. I bet you have, boy. I bet you have. He just like looks at you with one good eye. I can't, I can't close that eye. <laughs> he just looks at you. Yeah. What did you do? Just walk. Just, just walk off. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You guys head off. So. You mentioned making way out Hello. <laughs> <laughs> no, you guys had sneak, yeah. snuck away, like they yeah, didn't even gone. spot you. I'm still um, invisible. Yeah, you were invisible. <coughs> I lost for an hour. So, um, you guys make your way out of the town, and did you want to go and find the tracks that the, the sheriff had told you about? Yes. Okay. So, I need everybody to give me survival checks. Oh, I'm a survival. what? Uh, Elora, you have an advantage because you're outlander. Not much better. I've, I hate everything about dice. Ooh, I've got... Yeah, me too. Uh, you could, in theory, beast form and 12. probably track it a lot easier. 12. Okay, 12. Same. Mm. 8. 8. 17. 17. Uh, Nanistri rolled a 19. Um, and so he gets a 21. What a leader. 
So the, between you're kind of all searching around, and the three of you aren't having much success. The snow is so thick it's very difficult to find. But Juto, you and Elise, you kind of bump into each other, and you start finding traces. Um, broken branches that indicate that animals have passed through, the occasional paw prints and stuff. Um, but eventually, yeah, you begin to find this trail. It's heavily covered <coughs> by snow, and there are times when you lose sight of it only for either yourself or Nalishri to find it again, picking it up. And between the two of you, you actually manage to kind of lead the group. The trail doesn't appear to lead back towards the Elven Spire, though. Uh, it seems to lead off further to the north, um, away from the Spire and away from Hallow itself. And this trail isn't leading back to the Spire. Should we follow it or should we head back? I'm, I'm not sure what we should do. Well, Melora. How is don't put this on me. I don't know what to do. How is the sheriff going to join us? How is he going to know where we went? Follow He's tracks. not going to be able to. I think it's a bit late to worry about that now. I'm sure the sheriff can look after himself. Am I still invisible? Uh, it takes probably about a good hour to like start finding this trail. Can I just say when we first started, like I'm just going to spend a little bit of time, like just you know, walking around Cam and going boop. Okay. While I'm invisible. Yeah, you're just like. <laughs> like like tripping him up and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. You face palm into the snow a few times. It gets <laughs> everywhere. Let's get used to it. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, um, well, I I don't want to make this decision. What do, what do you all think individually, Choma? Uh, should we head back to the spire or should we <coughs> follow these tracks? Are we like out in the open here? You're basically like moving through snowy wilderness. So, like there are bits where you go through forests, you kind of go through little valleys and stuff like that. But it's definitely luring a wave into the more wilderness, basically. And what sort of time is it? Uh, it's quite early still because you guys got up pretty much, you know, with sun sunlight. It's not been that long. It's probably still like nine, ten a.m. I think we need assistance. I think we need to go back. We can't defend anybody at the spire from here. Okay. If they've already made their way there. And we've be. missed them. We can't defend our families. It's true. It's true. We could be on a wild goose chase, chasing the wrong thing. Mm. We might be able to pick this trail up again. If we go back and then we do need to try and follow it for some reason, we might be able to find it again. I'll leave a mark. Let's go Walk away. All right. Um, uh, All right. So you guys make your way back to the spire. Okay. You guys make your way back. It doesn't take you. It takes you two or three more hours to head back. And you arrive and the walls are fine, the guards are on patrol, there's no sign of any giants as you make your way back. All seems normal. Um, and you are led inside if you wish. How long did that take? About two, three hours, so you're talking about midday-ish now. Okay, cool. Well, at least nothing bad's well, happened. It seems fine. Perhaps they're still waiting? Maybe. Let's go inside and find, find You make your way inside and... Uh, the servants kind of approach and they take off like your cold weather and clothes and things like that. Uh, one of the servants comes up and whispers something to Nalistri, and Nalistri kind of goes like, thank you. Um, my father has turned a little bit. I think the events of yesterday have had its effect on him. He's retired to his chambers. Uh, we probably won't see him today. My mother is around, but she's busy with her studies. Um, your father and mother are just waiting in their rooms currently, uh, waiting to see if my father feels better. Um, I think it seems fine. We should warn them, though. Yes, I will send word. Perhaps if I talk to Silva, my sister, she will be able to send word. I think we all need a chat. With who? You. Why? Let's let's chat, shall about we? What? what do we need to chat about? I don't like I don't like chats. I'm not. It'll I'm be not brief. Really keen. But I think we just need to clear the air. Start somewhere. shuffling, looking at his feet. He's like, "What's up? What's the matter? I don't like this." Can we go somewhere private? Uh, we can go to my room. Where well, there's no prying ears. Uh, your room? Yeah. All right. Sounds good. He follows you to the room. Cool. Uh, yeah, you get in, you shut the door, there's no servants. Sit there's, down. There is some food laid out on the table, like dry food, like dried meats and fruits and cheeses. Take a seat. Oh, this feels so, so strange. He sits down. Are you interrogating me? Is this what this is? It's trouble going to try and read my mind. Don't read my mind. I'm not going to try and read it. Good. That's it. No. You need to tell us what your family is doing here. What do you mean? There seems Juto is shaken. There's something going on. Juto is always a little bit shaken. But not without a good reason. <laughs> he kind of like he narrows his eyes like, do you believe that again? I'm like, he kind of doesn't believe that you believe what you're saying. He's like, Look, I, I don't know. I've been traveling with you. My 
father was devastated about Dathomir. Why was the picture in the gallery covered up? Part of the picture. What picture? Uh, I described the family the portrait. Comment. Yeah. I never really spent much time in the gallery, to be honest. Um, I never noticed it. Do you I know don't... anything of an aunt? Aunt? No. no I've never been, it's never been mentioned to me before. Do you talk as far as I your... know, that my well, my brother had a my, my father had a, an uncle um, who died in, in uh, an incursion in the Feywild once. But he never spoke to you of a sister. No, no, that's madness. He would have, or at least Dathomir, or no, Dathomir would have told me about that. Would they though? Dathomir was kind to me. He he was perhaps Sil <coughs> Silver is polite, friendly, but still cold. Dathomir he wasn't like my father. He was much more kind-hearted. He he saw much of what Lady Alora does, that the elves should be united, that we should help the people of, of the Dawn Republic where we can. He was an idolist. He was always nice to me. Hmm. He was what made being here tolerable. That's why I didn't mind it so much, but now it's so different. Without him, it's, it's so cold. It's so unpleasant. I worry about the Lord, your father. Yes, he is. He's got a cold stare about him. He is, but I know he means... I, I can understand why you may be suspicious. I, he is a cold, strange man, I'm sure, to most of you, but I can promise you he cares so much about the elven people. That is... Uh, the elven Elora's people... Elora's father would, will tell you it's the same. The elven people, mayhaps. But what about the humans? I don't think that he wishes anyone harm. He just doesn't... He doesn't want to give away a resource that could help elves, that's all. I, he wouldn't hurt anyone. My father's, he's a warrior, but he's defended people all of his life. He's fought against the Archfey. He's fought to save his people. I, I don't think that he would ever mean any harm. He may be cold, he may be unfeeling, but he's a man bound by duty, by law. Very well. I'm sorry, I, 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 I can understand your suspicion to some element, but... I, you are asking me to believe something that I, I just don't think is the case. It's just nice and worthwhile investigating all options. No, yes, you're right. Um, I would be interested to know more of this aunt or this picture that you've seen. That is news to me. The fact that that is news to me is worrying. The fact that there's secrets. My father knows more about it. Does he? My father has known your family for a long time. Did you speak to him about this? Do you know anything more? He doesn't I... remember much, but he did hear of a sister for your father. This is, um, I don't know what to say. Uh... I don't want to bring it up with your father because I, I don't know how he will react. I don't want to intrude. No, um, especially at this time, you must understand that Dathomir was his, his apple of his eye it was his favorite he was everything that he wanted in uh, an elf to be brave courageous noble he meant a lot to him he, my sister and I well, my sister I know he cares for but not in the same way does your father have enemies the archfey themselves um, they've hated it. the winter spire is, is the stalwart defender of the elven realms they are the ones that keep the Archfey and their forces at bay whilst the Summer Realm goes out to strike at their strongholds. We are the, the wall, the line. Um, Is there tension between spires? Between your spire and others? Not tension per se. Summer and winter are opposed. Very much like the seasons, I'm sure that Alphadon may remark that the, the sun and moon spires do not always see eye to eye. Why the moon spire cares very much for the land and a very thoughtful and generous about the people, Sun, the Sun Spire is very much not. They are uh, frivolent and uh, a bit too carefree. Likewise with the winter and summer, they are aggressive, they are, uh, they are more concerned with glory than they are about doing their duty. Um, so there has always been a, a, a distinction, but not to this degree, not to anything that would cause any sort of, of strife. Yeah, well, again, it's worth investigating. Yes. So there's no reason to believe that... I suppose my other question is, what should we do now? I mean, we've returned here. There's no sign of these giants. 
Do we wish to pursue those trails? Should we investigate further? Send something out to scout? I don't know. You're so much more accomplished at this sort of thing than I. It's difficult. I Ms. Duto, what do you think? You've been very quiet about all of this. We should warn your father and get the Winter Spire ready for an attack. Yes, I agree. And then we should go and follow the tracks. And if somehow we can get the Sheriff to join us, we need more people to join our cause. Hmm. We could at least scout ahead and see if we can find their base uh, numbers, anything, information to relay back yes. to the King. Yes. The Lord. That seems wise. And also Hallow as well. Yes. Just as fragile, if not more so, mm. they deserve to know. Yes. Well, the sheriff does know, so hopefully he can warn his people. If he joins us, then he can relay. Yes, true. Very well. Well, um, I will go and make the preparations then. Um, we should have at least a few hours. Sounds great. Very well. And on that note, we're going to finish that session today because it's five past eight. Yeah. <laughs> so it seems like a good point to finish that off. Yep. Not a cliffhanger by any stretch, but still a good stepping off point. Um, I hope all of you guys have enjoyed today's session. It was quite a good RP one, I thought, today. There's a lot. There was a lot of yeah, RPs. Lot. <coughs> I thought it was good. I thought it was fun. Mad Bants. Mad Bants. Top Bants. Top, Top Bants. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Now, I know Trot and Katie, you guys have got to shoot off straight away. Go so we'll be here for donations. Kim, Matt, you stay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I have a lift home? Yeah. <laughs> we'll so we're going to stick around and read donations. Thank you all very much for joining us. Now, a lot, guys. Next I'll read week. the donations when we go back. I yeah. just forgot to get up at five in the morning. So you guys have got stuff to do. Um, next week, we don't have a Kim or Trot. You guys are away. We don't really know what we're going to do yet, but we will Probably let you know on the Twitter. Yeah. Make sure you check out at High Rollers DND on Twitter because we'll post all the updates there. I'll try and post it to the subreddit as well. There'll be something. Um, there'll be something. There'll be something. Whether it's a fill and stream or whether it's a QA or known. something, or if we can get some guests in, I'll try do that. We'll try and do something. Um, in fact, actually, I don't really want to do guests because I want to, all of us to be here for the next part of the story. Okay. So it'll yeah. probably be a fill-in stream. So there we go. Just so um, they don't miss it. And then the other one is make sure you go and watch Kim's Q&A vlog that she's put out on her channel. Lots of high rollers questions with me, Kit, me, Everyone but Kat. Matt, and Katie. Everybody except my, uh, Trot. She's a busy so, bee. There is a cameo there, isn't there? Well, there's footage Boy. of yeah. Trot crying. Yeah. yeah. It's a very um, lovely little clip of him crying. He's so busy. So. <laughs> House move. Interview. Yeah, it's Life. very busy. So Life. you guys get out of here. We will read some Bye. donations. Thanks for all your kind generosity. You. We will read all and of thanks the for messages. Watching. No, 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 no. Uh, we will read yeah, the messages. We've got the rubber over there. I don't have it. Oh, oh Christ. Oh. Nope. <laughs> right. Can you oh. turn that screen on, Kimo? You got one over here you can see? Yep. Yeah. If you want to sit over here. Oh. Um, so you I can do it. It's very difficult for me to move. So I, might, I, I can see this like one I'm today, so I'm just going to read that one. Because it's very hard for me to move. <laughs> so, go on, Kim. Marahute. I knew I was going to get this one. Uh, Kim, if I leave a nice comment, do I still get that stern talking to because of the thing? <laughs> if not, hey, Matt, you like look so fetch today. Fetch. Okay, thanks. Fetch. <laughs> Bam goes TNT oh, no. donated. Uh, for all those who can't donate but want to, we love high rollers. I'm working on English grammar and phonetics for uni, so I can't watch anything tonight. I'll be sure to catch the bod after I've exhausted my brain. Pho word stress. Stress is right. Phonemes. Phonemes. Bye. Word stress. Love you, bye. 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 Matt O. Love you, Katie. Uh, Sawtooth 44. Try your uh, oh, what's that? S S F H H O I. I don't know. That's an acronym. Uh, Sawtooth44 here, your friendly Voids Wrath guy. It, uh, first time watching live, binge watch till episode 23, and have been keeping up ever since. Loving the series so far, got me into D&D, but try as I might, I can't ever play. Even in the Kafkast D&D one. GL or... Oh. Well, I'm guessing that's like an online game, maybe organized like yeah. Discord or something like that. Sorry to hear, I hope you get into a game soon. Mm. Kim? Uh, Zero the Duke. Forgot to donate last week, so happy belated birthday, Katie. Mark, what do you think of Velo's Guide? I'm gonna be playing a Goblin Wild Mage and I'm hype! 
finally, up to Laura, eight legs. Oh, I'm not saying that I'm bit. Not, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> is that anatomically correct for an nope. octopus? Then no. <laughs> um, oh, okay. In terms of Voto's guide, I don't get it yet, but I will do soon. And maybe I might even give one away, because I might have two. Can I have one? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Ryu Master just subbed for the first time. I got caught up last Sunday and now I can watch live. I love this series! Woo! Thank you very much, Ryu Master. Welcome, welcome to the Rolling Crew. Oh, look crew. what's happened. Hundo! Hundo! Uh, that's ne ne nef nef Nefkler? Nef Nefkler. Nefkler. Uh, happy American Thanksgiving! Thank you for hours and hours and hours of laughs and entertainment. Is it Thanksgiving today? I thought I thought that was next week. So did yeah. I. Huh. Well, maybe Black it is. Friday is next Friday. Yeah, that's what yeah. I was thinking. And that's well, the only reason why I know when Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving yeah, that's is. Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, thank you very much for your very generous donation. Thank you. In the spirit of Thanksgiving. Dreyers! Hey, Dreyers. Wait, what? It's Sunday already. Thanks for <laughs> another session and also the last few days. Also, Matt, if you greet me once more with nice to meet you, I will stop punch. No, I will start punching you. Maybe <laughs> that way you will remember that we have met six times now. But this is the thing, I can't remember meeting you before dress. <laughs> Right. You're just that forgettable. Well, that's what you're saying there. That's basically that's what, what you're saying. That's not what I'm saying. I can't remember. I what mean, an I, I think asshole. I've seen you around the office, but I don't think we've ever sort of properly spoken. Probably introduced. No. Look at all this mess Trot has left me to clean up. Have, well, and Sam to clean up as well. What a prick. Right, who's next? Is it me? Who is it? Is it me? Me. Zero the Duke. Oh yeah, also I wanted to ask, how would you do a half and half Dragonborn who's not the same? Like a blue, silver, lightning slash cold. Dragonborn. Uh, I probably have it so you change which breath weapon it is every long rest. That's how I do it. Uh, and they have conflicting <coughs> personalities. Um, next one is from Soul Slip 1988. The highlight of my week, so here is the Magic the Gathering money for this week. Put it to good use with a generous donation. Thank you very much. Sam in chat has said he's not cleaning anything. No. Uh, I, I don't expect you to, Sam. We all clean it up. Uh, Spud Walt. Uh, I actually managed to catch the stream for once, so I'm going to try and watch as much as I can live. Here's a thank you for giving us a distraction from the lunacy that is American politics right now. Yeah. We, so yeah. don't worry, here in the UK we've got our you know, crazy yeah. politics as well. Woo! Obviously not as bad, uh, but you know, not great. No. So, Escape with us to the world of Iraq. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Where at least you can punch bad people in the face and yeah. get away with it. Oh, maybe I should have like a bad guy called like... Brump. Crump. Yeah, Crump. <laughs> Crump. That's it, Crump. yeah. President Crump. Ronald um, Crump. Ronald and he, Crump. He, tr he tries to take the, tell us fall away from Korak. Yeah, I mean, he tries to build a... He's just going to sit on fire. Yeah, exactly. He tries to build a wall. Uh, Night Jar. Have eaten my body weight in Carver each day, but managed to roll my way home in time to watch my favourite people slash trash rollers. Waited for this all week. Love you guys. I Didn't think that was some good rolls. It wasn't super trash today. I rolled like, really rolled well pretty today. well. You were, you were on fucking fire with the old Nutel pew pew. Yeah, it was I rolled pretty good. I rolled pretty well too. Uh, D-Snake. This Mick, I don't know how to pronounce it. Listen Mick. This Mick. Managed to catch up with last week's stream just five minutes before this one started. Whoa, Woo! yeah! Question, since you're in snowy lands right now, what is, would be your character's favourite winter sport? I don't know. Juto has no time for sports. <laughs> Skiing. The luge. <laughs> the luge. It's all like, what's the, is that the sledding one? What's the one in from Cool Runnings? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bob's. Bob's she yeah. probably actually like ice hockey. Yeah, because she so can skate around, yeah. be violent, and use her guando as, as a, a, as a, as a, as a hockey, stick. hockey stick. Yeah, yeah. There you go. There's the answer. Uh, uh, Rom Rapara. Oh goodness! I was afraid I'd be late for the super awkward dinner. Cannot freaking wait. <laughs> is Cam part duck song? You'll get grape someday. I don't know what duck song is. No. That's lost on me. Yeah. Kim. Sorry. The Endorian gift players, whoops, dropped a bit, so they cheered with a bit. Which one is bit. This new... <laughs> the one bit. One that is, bit. That is one cent, I believe. <laughs> um, thank you very much, though, for your cheered one bit. Hey guys, I started watching the VODs on YouTube about a month ago when I was invited to play DD with some friends. Your vids taught me how to play and gave me hours of enjoyment. Thanks for this amazing series and introducing me to DD. My favourite type of message, I'm glad you're enjoying DD. Uh, ooh, uh, uh, mini. Tank, tank PR. PR. Hey guys, just wanted to say, loving the streams, didn't know much about D&D or High Rollers, my friend Fluxy Penguin got me into this and love it. Really want to play some now, to be honest. Uh, could you do me a favour and give her a small shout out for showing me this? Well, well shout out to Fluxy Penguin, there you yeah. go. Shout. Shout out. Thank you for the Smoking kitten. Smoking. Smoking. Uh, hi guys, I won't be able to watch live today, but I just wanted to pop in and say that when I've saved up money, I will get my first tattoo in honour of you all. Oh my god. I will be a D20 somewhere in the tattoo. Oh, that's pretty that's cool. Pretty cool. Love it. 
uh, meatballs and sausage. Hey guys, <laughs> sorry for not donating in ages. You don't need to apologize for that at all. Only just got caught up with the show. Question, is it true you can have a tiefling with wings? If so, when do they get that? How? Yeah, that's an option in one of the Unearthed Arcana articles. It's called an Abyssal Tiefling. Um, it's not like something you gain. You have to be it from level one, which means you can't have it. Sucks to be Kim! P.S. Kim, love your horror one shots. Aww. Naples is awesome. Matt, can we hear Oh My Foxies? Oh, oh My Foxies. <laughs> oh, I really want to do another one Fucking shot. Green like, yeah, it's, just it's just green wing. I can't I know. not. I, know. <laughs> I want Barnabas and Naples back. So funny. <laughs> Uh, Sir Chuckles, hey -o, High Rollers and Trout. Also, Trout, how is the aphrodisiac working from rust? <laughs> I'm just messing this series. Yeah. Uh, knee, uh, where have we gone? Uh, uh, any results. results from the tests we ran? Question time for Matt. Favourite Doctor Who, uh, oh, Doctor, and or episode? No, we're not. Yeah. Favourite Doctor, Tom Baker. Favourite episode, Pyramids of Mars. Thank you. Boom. Yeah. See? Easy peasy. Yeah, give me shit. Why? Kim. Why? No, no, let's not do the why. Yeah. Yeah, that would take a while. <laughs> Studio Calthifer. Um, Hey guys, long uh, time VOD VOD watcher. First time donating. Just wanted to know what everyone's favorite Studio Ghibli movie is. I think Kim should DM a game set in Laputa, Castle in the Sky. Actually, yeah. Uh, also, has anyone watched Steven Universe? Thanks for all that you do. What's your favorite Ghibli? Princess Mononoke. Princess Mononoke for me as well. I've only seen Spirited Away and The Cat Returns. Uh, Cat Returns is pretty good. I like to have Cat to say Cat Returns, Cat Returns yeah. That's pretty good. Uh, also, uh, actually no, I'm going to rescind mine. My favourite is the loop in the third movie he did, The Castle of Cagliostro. That's my favourite Ghibli movie. Because mm. technically it was done by Studio Ghibli, basically. Still Princess Mononoke for me. I reckon that would make a great D&D. &D. Well, Mononoke or Lapita. Yeah, Mononoke. Yeah, both. Well, a piece of it. To be honest, Ghibli, in general, most of his yeah, universes yeah. would work really well. Yeah. Um, 98 Bale, you. Is it me? 98 Bale. Happy birth happy belated birthday to Katie. I couldn't watch live last week as I was actually at an early birthday party for myself. It's my big 3-0 today. Welcome to the club! <laughs> uh, I suppose I need to start acting like an adult now. No, you don't. Nah. Uh, thanks for all for being so entertaining each week. Yeah, me and Kim are in the Theo Club too. Woo woo! 32 next month, isn't it? Woo! Yeah. Woo! I'm 31 in February. Mm -hmm. Old. Get bus passes soon. Matt. Uh, generic evil genius. Sadly, I missed last hey. week. I was watching a bunch of Canadians raise almost $700,000 for Child's Play. Have you heard of Desert Bus for Hope? Before? I have, because the Penny Arcade guys do stuff. I know that Jerry from Penny Arcade was doing a lot of stuff. That's awesome. Good job, them. Uh, a replica of a Destiny gun I made got auctioned for over wow. $2,000. Looking forward to the Jingle Jam next. Woo! Oh, thank That's you. Amazing. amazing. Kim. Miss. CL. CL, yeah. Well, well, we already know Cam has a natural 20, but with the way this is going, maybe we'll need Troll to, ro uh, troll to Roll as well troll. now. Troll to Roll. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Dyslexia. Yeah. No, no, I do the, you know, mate, you've seen me fumble yeah. over everything, I'm the same. Vanguard Badger, uh, loving the RP, and as ever, the music is so on point. Good job, Sam, this week. No Steve yeah. this week, so Sam's been doing <clears> an awesome job. Looking forward to the next High Rollers album, whenever that will be. Uh, Jedi Slayer. I like Slayer. How got the smooth jazz going on as well. Yeah, it's yeah. nice. That's quite nice. It's chill. Jedi yeah, Slayer. Yeah, yeah. Hi guys and gals. Uh, I hope the stream went well. I've not been and won't be able to watch live for a while, but I can still enjoy the VODs. Mark, when are the High Rollers dice going to be for sale? Oh, soon, hopefully, one day. No, so again, it's the supplier. It's probably not going to be until the new year, probably not until late January. Um, but they will be coming. We will post when they're out. Instead, you'll have the awesome new poster to buy instead. Oh, new poster. And then the dice will hopefully be in the new year. Yeah. And they finish off by saying, I hope everything is awesome in your day-to-day -day lives. Thank you. Scott Silverwing says, Wasn't Nimbus a Kukri, not a dagger? Kukri tend to have a bit more of a curve to them, making them a bit more slashy than stabby. I described it as being a bit more like a Kukri, but it's still a dagger and it still does piercing damage because rules. Um, and it's just, yeah, he can still stab with it just awkwardly. <laughs> Bam goes TNT. Sporadic visits to chat and then some clues. Finally take a break. High rollers are on break. All right. It sees this is a sign to continue the assignment. By the way, I saw the costume, Mark. Mind if I tweet you my costume for LARP? I went to you. You can tweet to me. Tweet me whatever. 
Sounds Everybody good. wants a Korak action figure and a Grand yeah. <laughs> One day, one day. Uh, Shadow Sage, Wang! Remember me? Happy <laughs> Thanksgiving soon. I'm thankful for you guys, so here's a little something for being great. And it would be hilarious if you made the elf, don't remember which one, names get confused, flirt with Kim in front of Cam and Trowell. Well, which else? She, I'm guessing Silver, Silver. Yeah. That was flirting with these two. She's not interested in girls. Sorry. I have a lot of characters that are interested in a lot of people. This one's only interested in, in the men's. So there you go. Uh, the Andorian cheered for five bits. Five bits. So one bit at first. Yep. Five bits, five now, bits now, with now with Giftless. Yeah. Giftless. Uh, Sky Silverwing donated. I've been meaning to ask: Is Duracell considered enchanted now? Since Evangel brought it back to Cam, like with a magic bonus to hit with the enchantments on Duracell and Nimbus, have bonus to rolls like performance to turn his weapon. No, so it's not enchanted. It's just kind of a bit more blessed. Um, and in terms of their magical bonus, Nimbus doesn't give it to things like twirling it around. It is just it has a sharper edge for attacking and damaging. There you go. Answered. Uh, uh Emily G H. Uh, yeah, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for answering both my questions in your vlog, Kim. Love the great RP over that dinner. Trell and Cam made me die a little from laughter and embarrassment with Silval, if that's how you spell it. Also, Oops. music was on point, Steve or Sam. Sam. And it's Silval is S Y L V A L. Yay, I spelled it right. Uh, we got another bit from a person that we've gone past. <laughs> Proud it. Demon, five okay. bits. Woo! You read the nice one. Uh, and then Mr. Zixhill with a generous $79.52 mm, nice. donation. Uh, DM'd my first campaign yesterday, running the Princes of Apocalypse campaign. Mm -hmm. Almost killed one of the PCs in the first and only fight. Went on for eight plus hours, and the players enjoyed it very much. Thanks for the awesome streams and story and thank you very much for your generous donation when the D&D is just right <laughs> uh, another bit 100 bits this time uh, Shanticles donated and that was from Silenced Hands for the bits Shanticles donated the next three sessions are going to be whilst I have a stinking hangover because suddenly I have a social life what even is that Mark if you could refrain from killing anyone for a while to hold off on the shouting that would be great love you all I can't promise that Shanticles I can never promise that because it's not up to me uh, if it's tea party, uh, if it's tea party, I feel so bad for Nalistri. He's my favourite NPC, and everyone treats him like crap. I know what it feels like to be shunned by one's family. Oh, I'm so sorry. So he's like my soul elf. Could someone give him a hug from me now? Juto, Juto really likes him, and that's why I stepped on both yours and Cam's foot because I was like, "Shut the I fuck think up!" I guys. think Elora and Elora's family mm. do as well. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, him and Elora, of course. Yeah. Well, I've, I've wanted to kind of give him least a little bit of a pep talk for ages, but it's just never come up. Too awkward. Too awkward. Uh, you, Kim? I'll give him a hug. Uh, the most uh, uh, socially awkward tiefling hugging the most <laughs> socially awkward elf. <laughs> Uh, Techie Reed, hi, hi rollers, loving the stream as always. Cam, you've lost the elven nobility to Trell, just admit it. <laughs> <laughs> no, we haven't. I can tell you that now. There was some note passing going on. Yeah, yeah. there was some note passing going on. Rom Rapper donated again, thank you Rom. Thank you. Uh, gay love and the old west wrapped up in a shiny D&D shell. This is why I love it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. And who's that? Pastrick donated with cheers, cheered 100 bits. Uh, Lullable Flux, uh, hey guys, love the stream, I'm in a couple of games myself because of you and I'm DMing one too. Annoying thing is that I roll low as a player and high as a DM. I know that feeling. Uh, Trot, you should use mirror image and channel duplicity at the same time. Can't stay, sorry. There you go, boom. Huh? He has used that actually, he did that last time I think. Everyone's going bro TP with Juto and bro TP. now. But like they pointed out, uh, Nilly Toe Fire and Ice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, all juggled up. Hi guys, just an update. Catherine Tate last week was awful, but I prevailed with Evandra by my side. Spending this weekend up to my eyes in codeine after an operation on Friday. All healthy now. High rollers on medication is interesting. I imagine. I hope you get better soon. Yeah, get friend. well soon. Bit. <laughs> Fuck me hugs has cheered one bit. Higher than those rollers. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, Turn off donated. Well, bloody hell, life got in my way today, and according to Mark's tweet, I'm missing an epic role playing session. I have to catch it on the VOD, but here's a quick and drive by donation before I'm off again. And can't wait for the amazingness and oh. happy face. Thank you, Turn off. Thank you. Uh, Bam goes TNT. Good news, assignment delivered. <laughs> Why can we get updates? Uh, trying to transcribe stuff is hard. My brain feels like melting cheese. Thank you for being awesome and streaming for us. And thanks, Steve, to his, uh, too, for his hard work for the for the ear shattering volume he produced during the break. Amazing, GG. Uh, Steve, uh, Steve's not here. It's Sam today, but Steve will be back. Uh, Kimo. I like Nightshare and chat has gone. Juto doesn't have a family, and the least Street's family don't like him. Awkward pep talk incoming. That's literally yeah. Summed <laughs> it up. Uh, but yes, thank you to Pepperfruit Pesto for donating. Can season two please be all set in Tundra Cowboy Land? <laughs> I, I like, like the fact that people like Cowboy Tundra Land. I love it. It was a bit weird. Oh, it's, pretty, it's pretty cool. As soon as you described yeah. him, I was just like, you've been reading Gunslinger. I haven't. Uh, haven't. Lock Dark Tower. Nope. Just fucking love Wild West shit. <laughs> like, it's cool. Looks yeah. like Idris Elba, who's just been cast as Roland. But that's just because, like, Idris Elba is an incredibly fabulous and amazing man, and I love him. Yeah. Yeah, um, that's why I so went dreamy as soon as you yeah. mentioned Idris Elba. I was like, like Idris Elba is the boss. <sighs> um, I, I almost gave him the loofah. Loofah. I needed the Wild West accent. You slag. Slag. Uh, uh, who's next? I'll just do it. You. Nightjar. Just so, just so. How many westerns and Christmas films did you watch over the past week, Mark? This is thrilling, wonderful. Also, can we keep Tundra Cowboy interest help? <laughs> Please. Please. <laughs> oh, we'll see. Maybe. Maybe. He's maybe so we can. cute. In my head, he's cute. Uh, another one from Bam Goes TNT. Uh, I keep picturing Trail looking terrifying. He's blasted open the door. His mouth gone. Eyes and no face. Standing in smouldering uh, remnants of the doorway. <laughs> I would have peed my pants. The doors must be feeling terrified. This nightmare of a dark elf. Yeah. Oh, thank you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the narwhal of death. Uh, sadly, couldn't catch light this live today as I was visiting my mum in hospital. She's oh, just man. had a stem cell wow. transplant. Wow. Um, I always. <coughs> oh, <crap. coughs> I always look forward to how far Trell can push his luck with the RNGs, and this week is no different. P.S. I ship Nelora. Nelora. And um, oh, yeah, I hope your your mom uh, gets better soon. Yeah. Uh, Harass Civil 7 donated with no message, thank you very much. You. And the Endorian <laughs> cheered 10 bits with a question mark. Ace of Thorns, hey man, uh, donated. Welcome to the wild, wild north. Iraq gets more and more interesting every week. Love you guys. Is that a good interesting or a bad interesting? Uh... One mid Tom. Hello from Alaska. Uh, first time watching live. Found High Roller as well looking for more Kim Horror on YouTube yeah. and saw her DM Horror one off. I was hooked instantly and have been catching up on all the streams since summer. Thanks for everything you'll do. Awesome. Aww, Thank that's you. Really cool. I'm glad you liked it. I'm really proud of those. Uh, Night Jor. Thank you for your donation. Jesus, Mark. All your NPCs just make me stupidly happy without fail. You all do. Love you guys. Thank you, Night Jar. Thank you, Night Jar. Uh, Brosif Starchin donated. Love the RP in this session was not expecting to see firearms in this. Hope they don't pose too much trouble for the group in future encounters, despite having fared well for the, in, in the first so far in the first one. Well, it's kind of interesting because I kind of hinted at them a while ago now, actually, back when you're in Tower Twelve. Really? Yeah, no, I remember. I remember you remember it. Yeah, yeah, like I hinted when you guys came back <coughs> from the island when you got rid of Dimitriv. Mm. Yeah. There was a lot of talk about how the Broken Sky was kind of doing more stuff, yeah. and they were using. Explosions with no magic and like oh, these kind of things. Right. It's kind of like hinting it, and then oh. he said like, "Oh, I think they're getting it from the north," and that's kind of like where I dropped some hints about that. I, I, I know you knew because you fucking write everything down. Juto remembers. <laughs> Um, uh, Metamanu, what an episode! Story and saloon brawl, everyone trying to get a Stetson. Do you all want to be the Magnificent Four? That'd yes. Be yeah, that'd be cool. I want a Stetson. Juto <laughs> wants a Stetson. Juto wants Idris Elba on her arm and a Stetson. Uh, GM Maneo some sauce, cheered four bits. Whoop, yes, Kess is the best. And Ride Harlick 148. Oh, here we go. Yeah. What's the difference between USB and USA? One connects to all your devices and accesses your data. The other one is a hardware standard. Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Durpledore donated a generous donation. Thank you. Dang, I thought where Laura sounded kind of scary, but a potential frost yeah. giant gone werewolf sounds terrifyingly awesome. There you mm -hmm. go. Kim just gives me a look there of like, is that what you've done? <laughs> well, is just, that what your, it's your voice is just against? went a little bit like, yeah, and I was like, hmm. 
Interesting. I'm trying to Sherlock Frost you. Frost giant werewolf. Be pretty cool, right? I'm trying to Sherlock mm. you. <laughs> Sherlock the Sherlock. Uh, Angelus Lucius, great session tonight, guys. Enjoyed it very much. Thank you. Um, Tucker. <laughs> 2025. 2025. The regular in my stream. Plot twist. There was no elf girl and Cam and Trell were just flirting with each other. <laughs> da, da, da! I should pull that on you two one day because that would be very funny. <laughs> Although you've kind of already done that to Cam when you pretend yeah. to be a woman. Yeah, that's true. Throw him off. So, yeah. Wouldn't bother Trell. Cool. Uh, shiny fingers donated. D&D &D irrelevant message, sorry. Kim, is your nail polish pure black or is there red in it? It looks great. What's everyone's opinion on guys with nail polish? I'm loving doing it. Green and blue right now. Love the stream as always. Another year plus. Guys with nail polish is cool. I love it. And it's actually purple. It's purple. It's purple. Like it's a, the dark, lights in here. a dark it purple. Yeah. Uh, and then we got a bunch of cheer. We got a cheer <coughs> from the Indorian again. Give plus. 50 bits this time. Ola Renve donated with no message, and then it's not the map. Uh, copy the pasty. Uh, still awesome as always. Love today's RP. And that's oh, a half hundo. Wow, yeah. thank you very much. Copy the pasty. Copy the birthday. Copy the birthday. Bathker Bell. Nen QH. I always <laughs> yeah. said nine QH for some reason. Hey guys, loving the Western slant on today's session. It was probably high noon in very many viewers' hearts. Everybody needs a Stetson, and Cam needs some assless chip. It's high noon. <laughs> I was waiting for you to I was, do that. I wasn't going to do I it. Was, That's the thing. I was, I, I was yeah. It was. I wasn't going to go there, but I'm glad somebody went there. Uh, Gremjal, Gremjal, um, donated. I have socks and uni applications overtaking my life at Mox. the minute. Oh, mocks. mocks. I thought that said socks. <laughs> no, the high rollers is a great respite. Love you guys in the RP. Today was epic. Fox heart, fox heart, fox heart. There you go. Emote, emote, emote. Emote, emote, emote. That's oh. it. Trelly. Uh, uh, Harris oh, Screw. Fuck, look what I, uh, I just got up to date with all the vids, and I was a great stream for me <coughs> to do my aerospace uh, homework while listening and also um, DMing a D D game because of you all with a sailor dwarf monk. Wood Elf Druid, Blacksmith Dwarf Fighter, and Gnome Wizard. That's amazing. Part of the short peeps. Oh. Kim gets it. Kim gets it. Go and read out the next donation. Awkward Dog Boner. Woo! <coughs> I'm going to do that every time we get one. <laughs> <laughs> this week's boner rating. A rectum out of 20. Cam got that dick, but Trail got ass. Raging hard on moment. Lots of men with long exploding shaft. <laughs> erection rejection moment. Juta with true erection rejection on Cam and Trell's boomsticks. Hashtag bone on Sunday. There you go. Uh, next Never one is from Bastek. Thanks for all the work you guys put into this series. It's amazing. Recently, I finished making the first piece of armor for cosplaying. Decided to make it look like Crown Red. Mark yeah. has seen it on Twitter. I believe might even send it to Kim. Too small for me. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Uh, Harry donated. Hey guys, love the streams. I'm playing my own adventure with friends and thought you'd find interesting that my character so far has used nothing but punches and random items as weapons. That includes wielding a live goblin like a mace. Wow. Always fun. Pretty cool. Always fun. Apparently, awkward dog burner. I missed the T I. Yeah, it was thick. It thick. was thick. Thick. Yeah. It was thick. Oh, like th thick. Thick. Like oh, thick and ang. Like th what? what? No, I don't know. What? Sorry. I'm just gonna leave you guys to it. Yeah. Randerick. <laughs> was there any chance uh, at the start for the party to join Galcia and become vampires? No, she wasn't really a vampire. She was a dryad corrupted by a guy, a goldfire's tree. So they wouldn't have become vampires. They probably would have just been dead. <laughs> uh, Mr. Zoo Hill, <coughs> Sam, is the music public anywhere? Donating in euros, Knights of Neon. I think like you can get the the High Roller soundtrack stuff. <coughs> But I think um, like Sam also uses a lot from epidemic music. It, yeah, all epidemic, epidemic sounds, sounds this week. All yeah. epidemic sounds. Which is really cool. I fucking love epidemic sound. It's really cool. Fuck. Uh ooh, the hand of Sutek. Watching from Bahrain. Wow. Uh, great show against folks. Uh, Matt, love your choice of favourite Doctor Who episode. Yes, and well it's... done on having Sutek as your name. Is that a Doctor Who? That, Doctor that is from my yeah. favourite story. <laughs> so. And the person asking in chat, no, I don't still have Gelthia's seed, I sold it to the Jin guy. You did? 
Uh, oh god, why? Uh, mo mots, mots, one, three. I can't read your name. It's got too many letters in. <laughs> mot, mot Motsimus. Mot I think if you like, were to use it as lead speak. Okay. Cheer ten bits. Uh, not much, but I just really wanted to say I've been watching since the second section, section, session, and I've always wanted to say you all brighten up so many people's day each Sunday. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's awesome. And then final donation for this evening from Nicole. 86. I wear a Stetson now. Stetsons are cool. That's, 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 that's another Doctor Who. I, I know that one. Do you? That's, that's, okay. I knew that one and the Fez thing. Yeah. I know that's a Doctor Who thing. Ah. I know. <laughs> uh, right, and that is all of the donations this week. Thank you, everybody that sent them in. That is super generous, and we really, really appreciate it. Like I said, next week, no Kim and Trot. So we're going to try and figure out what we're going to do, uh, and then we'll be back to... This storyline afterwards. Oh, when we come back, so we, we're going to be. We come back in December. It'll yeah, be June so we're going to yeah. be back on the evening of the third, which is Saturday. And we're streaming on the fourth. And we all this is the conversation of like, should we still do it on the fourth? And we're just like, yeah, we're going to be so jet lagged, but let's do it. Yeah. So that will be that will be. So the next proper stream will be the first one in during the Jingle Jam. So all of your donations will be go like we'll have it do via the humble bundle. So you can if you want to donate, you buy the humble bundle and all that stuff. Um, it will be a, a normal story session, but then the other session we're going to do during the Jingle Jam is going to be a Christmas special. It won't be a canonical story, it's mm. going to be a special like spin-off story. Same characters, but just like not part of the whole Elf Spire stuff. So there you go. So I hope you've enjoyed today's stream. I had a blast. I enjoyed uh, this RP really session. I just want to think about Idris Elba. Think about Cowboy Idris Elba and, uh, and be pleased. And uh, be well. That's and we'll see you guys next time. Roll on Sunday. Bye! Bye.